Yes, man. Is this home buying, home selling solutions? Oh, yes, it is. Man, thank God, man. I need help. I need to sell my house fast. Hey, no problem. Listen, we got you. Home by home sound solutions. If you got a problem, we got the resolution. Hey, repping on black and gold. Hey, repping that black and gold. Hey, home by home sound solutions. If we living all up just like a revolution. Hey, repping that black and gold. Hey, repping that black and gold. Hey, put up a couple band of signs. Pull up to your house and get a contract signed. If your home's in foreclosure, you don't know what to do. We'll do a wrap around your mortgage or a subject too. If your girl done left you and you got a divorce, we put some cash inside your pocket when you take her to court. As for a problem, vacant property where you don't reside, we'll make a cold cash offer because we're here by your side. Hey. Home by home sound solutions. If you got a problem, we got the resolution. Hey, repping on black and gold. Hey, repping that black and gold. Hey, home by home sound solutions. If we living all up just like a revolution. Hey, repping that black and gold. Hey. Repping that black and gold, ayy. Hey. Put work until we save the day. Home buying, home selling, we paid the way. Hey. If you buy high on taxes, we give you a check so you can go and cash it, ayy. Hey. We got all the time for a probate case. Find a way to close in 35 days. If you got a problem, we can find a way. Buying, flipping homes in the Lone Star State. Home buying, home selling solutions. If you got a problem, we got the resolution, ayy. Hey. Repping on black and gold, ayy. Hey. Repping that black and gold, ayy. Home buying, home sound solutions. If we living all up just like a revolution, ayy. Repping that black and gold, ayy. Repping that black and gold, ayy. Home buying, home sell it. We buying, who sell it? Home buying, home sell it. We buying, who sell it? Home buying, home sell it. We buying, who sell it? Home buying, home sell it. We're buying. Hey, social media, Mike here, my boy Charles. Charles, say what's up? What's up? Man, and today, guys, we got a very special podcast. How important is it for cold calling in your business? Right, Charles? You got to have the skills, man. Got to have the cold calling skills. You got to have the cold calling skills when you're doing wholesale or even just investing in general. How important is your cold calling business? And today, tell me what special guest we have today, man. Well, we got the one and only Aaron Bevins. If you guys don't know who he is, uh, you need to look him up. He's with the Superhumans. We got Mr. R.J. Bates. Uh, hopefully, he'll tune in with Titanium, right? Titanium, Titanium Investments. We got the one and only Steve Trang out of Phoenix, and uh, he's with uh, Real Estate Disruptors. We got Keith Everett, Mr. Diddy himself out of, uh, I believe, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Got Elijah Rubin out of uh, Phoenix, too, another heavy hitter. And we got Mr. Quinn Flores out of San Antonio with uh, Ground Zero. You guys don't know him. You know, get, look him up. And to cap it all off, we got Mr. Daniel Moore with Propelio out of Dallas, Texas. He'll be capping it off. Um, he's actually sponsoring the Closers Olympics. And uh, we'll be talking about some Propelio updates. That's what it is, guys. So if you guys didn't know, everything that every person that Charles just mentioned is a contestant of this upcoming event called the Closer Olympics 2020. Yeah. And what a what a good time. And every 10 minutes, guys. Charles and I are going to bring you a new contestant. We're going to see why they think they're going to win. What's some secret tips and tricks that they have up their sleeves that they're going to perform on the Closer Olympics? And you guys haven't bought y'all's tickets yet. Well, let's explain a little very, bit. Very, very, very. So there's, there's more. There's actually, uh, I think, another 10 guys. And it's just a whole bunch of really awesome closers, you know, uh, real estate closers. That they're coming together and they're going to compete. They're going to be closing people's deals online so people are going to be calling in and submitting their deals uh and they're going to be calling and and uh and seeing who who can actually uh, take the trophy man who can take the trophy who's that right there alifa so who can take the trophy now not only is it important to be a cold call closer but to have some of the greatest ones in the nations who are great at cold calling now i'm sure there's a lot more out there because we feel like there's more out there but to have some of the best Cold callers in the nation to all come together. That's going to call your leads, man. Who's it? Who's that? I'm asking you. Where? Right there. Oh, that's Alpha. She's one of our. She's one of our. our, our uh, Who's that? She's one of our. Um, Hit the uh, microphone. You're real close. Okay, to the I'm microphone. sorry, man. So if you don't know, man, it's my son-in-law. Sometimes, unfortunately, she's one of our hustle squad. Hustle squad. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So another thing before we move any for, further is, you know, this is this is not scripted. Not scripted. We just go at it. Sometimes we go at it ourselves. But the judges, man. The judge. Who's the judge? Maxwell. Max Maxwell. I mean, he's he's a. Uh, I guess you would say, you know, top dog in this industry. Then you got Mr. Carlos Reyes, which is another top dog in this industry. And you got Brent Daniels out of out of Phoenix, mm -hmm. another big dog. So man, just a bunch of big dogs, man, and uh, and, and uh, on this competition, man. So while Charles, in the next few minutes, go ahead and text uh, Bevins, make sure he knows he's up in four minutes. Now, what we're doing, every 10 minutes, we are bringing a contestant. It's not all the contestants, but we're bringing some of the contestants on here. And those contestants, we're going to ask them, what do they do differently when it comes to cold calling? How should they act or how should they suspect, ex expect to win cold callers 2020? Everyone's tuning in. I want you guys, for you guys who are watching, there's quite a few of you guys on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Go ahead and start dropping some of the questions that you want to ask these individuals. Some of the questions that you want to ask, like, man, this guy uh, who's making these calls uh, live, it's always it's always good when you do videos, but when it's a live video, it's that's different. A live video will tell you. He's coming up. Give him a call, man. Give him a call live. Give me a call live, live, man. live Facebook, man. Let me know he has four minutes to come up. Four minutes. We got uh, Mr. Aaron Bevis to come on here. And, you want me to uh, call him live? Call him live, man. Tell him that the people are watching. Is he late, man, to his own? Nah, his own... he got four minutes. You know, Hopefully not late when you're making cold calls. So this is a new thing for us. We're actually making live calls. Uh, Michael Sanity. A messenger. A messenger. So we live right now, man. So go ahead and start dropping questions. I want to see some questions on what guys... What questions should we ask these individuals? Now, how many we got? Six, seven of them? Six. Yeah, six. We got six. And if you guys didn't know Propelio, uh, Propelio is actually a big sponsor, one of the main sponsors of this whole um, this whole event. So, Aaron Bevis should be logged on here in a minute. What questions do you guys have? If you guys have a question, you can see Jocelyn here. Jocelyn has her her picture, uh, her name, and her comment. She said, let's go turn up the hustle. But let's talk a little bit about Aaron Bevins. And Jocelyn, thank you so much. And she's part of our... Our hustle squad. So Aaron's a young gun in this industry. He's a young mm -hmm. gun. He's uh he's uh made a name for himself because you know what? He took action, man. He took action. Yeah. He took action. He learned the process. He's he's immersed himself in uh in all things REI, but not just real estate, man. He's immersed himself in concepts and theory and and uh and spirituality, man. He's a real spiritual guy, man. And um so that's why he's making it, man. All right, we got uh two minutes. So Bevins, he's, he's actually logged on. So what else? What other questions before we get Bevins here at six forty sharp? What other questions we have? So question that we have here is how do you keep a great team to cold call? Now Charles, now this is not scripted. Charles, I want you to think of a tough question. Tough to question. Ask each man. of these contestants. Yeah. They're not gonna know. We're gonna put them on the spot because they're gonna be on the spot anyways when they're making these calls. Think of a tough question, and the last minute or two before this person logs off, I want you to ask that question. I want to see how they react. And what their answer is going to be. Good, good, good. This podcast will, I don't want to tell you if it's going to be who's going to, who's going to be a contender, but we got some heavy players. Now we wish we could go everyone, but unfortunately this is about an hour, hour and a half, uh, hour podcast or so. Let's mention one more time. One man. more time. The judges, Max Maxwell, you know, uh, big time in this industry. You got Carlos Reyes, big dog out of, uh, out of Phoenix, big guy with all in crew. Him and his partners are doing some fabulous stuff there in Phoenix and all around the country. Mm -hmm. And then you got Mr. Uh, TTP himself, TTP. Brett Daniels, another big dog out of Phoenix, doing some massive stuff. So you guys are going to get a treat, not only with all these cold callers, but you're going to get a treat by watching also these judges judge how these guys do their do their craft. So All right, man. Well, it's about that time, man. It's hit 640. Our first guest. Let's get him on here. What's goody? What's yeah, goody? Mike, 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 check. Mike, check. What's Mike, up, check. man? How you doing? Good, good. Can y'all hear me? What's going on, man? Good, good, good. I see, I see you dressed pretty good there, man. Can y'all hear me? I hear you, man. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. What, what's that? What'd you say, Charles? I see you dressed to the T's there, man. Man, so listen. You're sharp, man. You're dressed sharp. So, Aaron Bevins, guys who are watching, we got quite a few people watching on Facebook. Quite a few people watching on YouTube. Uh, man, Aaron, first first uh, guest on this podcast. We're gonna have a total of how many? Six. Six. We got we got Trang, we got yeah, Bates, we got uh, yourself, 
Q, D D Elijah, Keith, yeah. and Keith. Now, unfortunately, we can't get everybody, man. First question for you, Aaron. Yes, first sir. question that the people want to know. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do different than everyone else that's going to make you win? What I'm going to do different from everybody else that's going to make me win, I will say this. I don't know. I, it's hard to say. I, I'll say this. I'll say this. That's that's a really, really difficult question. It is a difficult question, man. Because, because – I, I actually learned from Steve Trang. So so you're actually going to see like the actual technique. But I'll say this, though. I'll say this. So Steve's technique, uh -huh. you, you're going to see that. For example, he has a technique where he pre-qualifies from the jump, from the jump. I've seen Quentin close. I've seen Chris Jefferson close. I've seen Keith Everett close. I've seen Elijah Rubin close. I've seen Steve Morales close. I've seen RJ Bates close. I've seen a lot of these guys close. Steve has a very, very unique closing technique. And I think it's probably, it's probably one of the illest. It's like, it's like, it's like, you know, in, in, in the old Van Damme movies, mm -hmm. you would see, you know, the big old dude comes in, in the ring and that's RJ Bates, right? The big old dude, he comes in the ring and he's like, and, and everybody's like, dang, that guy's crazy. Like he, you know, such an intimidating presence. And then you have Steve Trang and then Steve Trang is the little Asian dude that's just smiling in the back. You know what I mean? Well, look, Steve Trang's kind of tall though, man. <laughs> I mean, not compared to me. He's he's a little, you know, shorter compared to me. <laughs> so, so here's the thing, man. You're going up against Steve Trang, right? Uh huh. So I I just share with everybody that you're a young gun in the industry, man. But you immersed yourself in the business. You took action. You have a successful podcast going on. You got a good team going on, and that's what it takes, man. If you want to be in this business, you got to immerse yourself in it. It got to be all about you. 100%. So what are you going to do? All that all that you've taken, all that you've learned, all that you all the people you've interviewed, what are you going to do when you go up against an OG like Steve Trang? It, it's going to be the same technique and that's what I was saying because he's an I think he's underrated because he has techniques that would dominate someone like RJ, right? But here's yeah. the thing, I've learned from him. I've learned from him. So what you're going to see different is the same exact technique, but it's going to have my swag on it. And I love Steve Trang. I had him on my show yesterday. I love Steve Trang. My swag is a little different than Steve's. You know what swag I mean? It's, it's, little, it's, a, it's a little nicer. It's a little nicer than Steve's. So, so you, I think what you're saying is that's it. The, student, that's it. the student is going to outperform the master? That, that the, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a good. That's a good philosophy. Let me let me ask you a couple of questions because we only got you for seven more minutes before the next guest comes up. Question here: How do you keep a great team to cold call? How do you keep a great team to cold call? Culture, culture, culture is what is what retains people. Culture is what retains people. So I think I think it's a couple things. I think your your as as a C, as a CEO as somebody who's building a company. Mm -hmm. Number one, um, your your pay structure. Your pay structure is going to attract people, and then your culture is going to keep people. And I think that sometimes as, as, as leaders, sometimes it's difficult for us to, to correct people, to hold them accountable, to be tough on them. But, but high performers want that. They want somebody who's going to, who's going to help them grow. Um, I, I say that's the biggest thing. Um, number one, be, be, a, be a killer on the phone yourself. Because it's going to be hard. For, it's going to be harder for you. And some people will not agree with this. However, I, I, this is my philosophy. If you suck on the phones and have never put forth any time on the phones, and and because you didn't like it, you didn't put any effort on it. Effort on it. You're you're a one pa one person army, and you're trying to keep a good cold caller or or a, a acquisitions or anything. And now you're directing them and telling them they do, they need to do X, Y, and Z, and you cannot show them. Uh, two things. Two things. Number one, they're going. They're they're going to. They're not going to take your word with as much respect because you ha you haven't done this. And then number two, um, uh, they they may begin to feel like they don't need you. 
So, so I, I'm, I'm a fan of the all, what the all in guys say. And that's, that's, if you, if you're going to build it, you, it, it may be best that you should have done every single one of the roles and at least been good at every single one of the roles. That way you can train and hold them accountable. That's exactly true, man. I mean, real quick, I would tell you here at the office, I got some young killers, man. And every once in a while, you know, Mike and I, or Mike or myself, we'll get on a call and we just have to go through the whole call, calming someone down, making sure the deal gets done, answering all the difficult questions. And we love when they see that because they get to learn off that, you know what I'm saying? And, and when they're out there in the trenches, they're just boom, 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 boom. They're just, they're just hitting all four cylinders. And then when they can step back and listen to a whole conversation, they're like, wow, man, that's pretty cool. And that's yeah. what I love about all these young players like you and, uh, and and all the people you're you're working with, our guys, of course, the all-in guys that they're out there, you know, doing damage. I mean, uh, you got You got to You got to be able to do it first before you can show someone else, man. Yep. Yep. Let's uh, let's get another question, Aaron. We got to uh, catch about four more minutes. Next question here is: What is your favorite techniques to handle objections? What is your favorite techniques to handle objections? That that's a broad question. That there's a there's a million different objections. Let's just take one. One of the object objections is uh, how'd you get my phone number? Uh, we actually got it from from public records. I was interested in, in purchasing a property in this neighborhood. I, f I saw this property. We looked it up. This number was associated with it. Um, so that's why we're calling you. And then right after that, I'll get into. So so um, yeah, that's why I was you know I was just calling to see if you were interested in selling. And then typically they they don't have they don't have any 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 issues with that um that I, I i mean it depends there's so many different objections you know what i mean um, I saying, it is pretty broad yeah so but that's a good one man let me get you let me get one more and then charles will ask you a question my question my question here comes from youtube all solutions ryan sovereigns did you get fear when you first started cold calling and if so how do you overcome that fear 100 percent fear and how do we overcome that one billion percent. That's a great question. I was absolutely terrified, but I'm a lion, baby. I'm a lion and I'm not trying to be cocky. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm really not. I'm really not. Um, but I know what I am. I know what I am. I am a lion. And so I do things that terrify me every single day. My first podcast terrified me. My first cold call terrified me. My first my first appointment terrified me. The the first time I, I um, you know, went on a date, it terrified me, right? But I did it anyway because I, I wanted something, you know what I mean? And so when I desire something, I desire it very, very strong. So um, what you, uh, what I think about exactly what I want and exactly mm -hmm. what I don't, I don't want. I, I create after affirmations for those things and I, I say it in the morning and so here's what I do to um, whenever I first started cold calling here's what I did to to get motivated I would I would um, set up my whole desk in my office set a, a uh, timer um, 30 maybe 30 minutes because I was scared uh, 30 minutes set up the timer and then and then on that on uh, once that timer uh, starts then, then I'm cold calling. No matter what, I begin cold calling, and I continue cold calling. I will not get up. I will not do anything. I will not take another call. I won't do anything. No use the restroom. Nothing until I finish that time block. If I found that the that the fear was too much for me, then then I would um, do my affirmations. Maybe get up and scream. And I even do this in my office. I'm I'm not. This is no cap. No cap. I, I do this in my office before you know. Whoa! I'm a beast, baby. You know, hit my chest, and it, you know, and it's corny, it's goofy, but but man, it does something. It changes your state. It loosens you up. It make you know, makes you laugh a little bit. And, Got it, man. And, Got it, man. So I don't want to cut you off, man, because we're running a little bit of time. So it sounds like let's the go, person of happiness. What you talking about, Charles? Ask your question. Okay, here it goes, Aaron. You're on a call. Things are going bad. You, everything's on the line. How do you save that deal, man? Man, listen, I'm going to be real with you. If the call is going bad, and I'm not trying to save the deal. I'm hanging up. I'm going on to the next one. I want juicy deals and juicy deals only, baby. I'm trying, to, I'm, trying, I'm trying to rack up the points. I'm trying to rack up the points. I only have 30 minutes. All right, man. I'm so let's see a little bit of back talking here. So I see Frank Tovar said, you talking about Aaron Van Dam? Aaron Van Dam, Dam baby. Who's next? This fool will just call Steve Trank short. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, Steve, uh, Steve, man, I love Steve, man, but R.J. Bates is ugly, man. All right, man, last, last twenty seconds. What you got? 
Um, I, just, just some encouragement to the people. Make sure to get your tickets for, for Closes Olympics. You, you are going to see not only education, you're going to see training and, and the nuances. Pay attention to the nuances, y'all. What we do with our voice inflections, what we do with our pauses, how we close, the words we use, what we do with our tonality. Pay attention to all those little things. Those are where you're going to get the most value. All right, man. Well, good luck, man. Thank you for having me on the show, man. Good luck at Close Olympics, and we'll see you, man. All right, my guy. RJ Bates, man. How you doing? What's going on, guys? Not What's much, up, man? man? How you doing, man? You just came back uh, from Alaska, huh? Yeah, I just got back yesterday, uh, getting back in the swing of things. Thank you guys for having us and uh, promoting the Closer Olympics. But, hey, I got to say, uh, Aaron just went through all of his fears there, but uh, he should definitely fear short man Steve Train since he came on here saying is Steve Train's nothing but a short little Asian man. That's a serious trash talk for the OG. Yeah, it's a serious trash talk. So we got ten minutes with RJ Bates. Everyone who's watching, guys, please feel free to start asking questions. Uh, ask questions YouTube, uh, Facebook. Uh, definitely see if we can get them in there. RJ, I'm gonna ask the first question. What do you do differently that's gonna make you win Closer Olympics? I think the, the full transparency of when I'm talking to a seller is going to differentiate myself from most sellers, you know, a lot of or other contestants, you know, they're talking about, you know, the strategies that they have either maybe they're a fan of Sandler or John Martinez where they go negative and kind of pull back um, or, you know, the negotiation tactics. I'm very transparent with the seller and just kind of thought from the perspective of, Hey, this is where I'm coming from. And I try to solve their issues along the way and try to mirror those two things uh, side by side. And, and, you know, it's funny. I actually had to get off the phone with a seller to get on here. Um, and and really, it was kind of an awkward, I, hey, I have to get off because she talked for probably 25 minutes um, just telling me all of her needs. And I, I wasn't saying a word. And then from that, I immediately went into – would you be willing to sell or finance this property? And she's like, absolutely. I would seriously consider that. And I don't think many guys that are participating in this are going to be open to allowing a seller to talk that long and immediately go into a creative option. Um, I know you guys are big on creative finance sub two. That's y'all's big thing. Um, and, and it's big for us. I mean, I'm literally recording this in a house that we took down sub two. So, um, you know, I, I think those just the creative side of things and being transparent with where I am as the buyer is going to differentiate myself. Well, that sounds good, man. Let's get a second question. Here comes from Al. Al says, uh, Alejandro says, talk, talk to us about your first cold call. How did it go? What did you say? And what was the response? What did you learn from that? So the first cold call that I ever placed was, like, to be honest with you, I've never actually cold called. I, I've always had a team that did that. I'm usually the the closer that kind of comes in later on for my team. Um, I've been blessed uh, to have a, a pretty strong team behind me since basically day one. Uh, but as far as like early on calls, I mean, obviously I was nervous and I tried to do too much of the talking. So what I learned early on is, RJ, you need to shut up and listen a lot more. Um, that's probably the biggest mistake that I see people early on is they try to dominate that conversation uh, because they're nervous, right? And the only way you can control it is is by talking is what you feel like. But in reality, if you just relax yourself, I thought Aaron had a great point earlier where he talks about, hey, his way of getting in that mode is just by screaming and beating his chest. Just find a way to relax yourself and just realize you're just talking to somebody. That's all it is. And it's different for everybody, you know. It's different for everybody. So what gets what gets RJ in that mode, man? What gets you in that, that killing mode? So if I'm going on an appointment, I love to listen to music. I don't really like to talk a whole lot before. I just kind of listen to my music, get in that game, game mode, you know, and uh just realize that hey, this is this is big for everybody, right? Like you're there to change the seller's lives. This changes my life, my team's life, uh, my family's life. We're trying to build generational wealth here. That's something that we throw out loosely. But when you actually talk about that, think about that. Every time you're going on an appointment, man, that's an opportunity for you to change the trajectory of your entire family, especially yeah. when you're taking down passive income, uh, things with creative financing, things along those lines. And, uh, you, you just start taking these a lot more seriously and, and realize you have the opportunity to help, you know, change somebody's life. Well, I want to say something to you. So we recently made some really good contacts in Hawaii 
And lo and behold, hey, do you guys know a guy named R.J. Bates? I'm like, yeah, you know R.J. He's out of Dallas. <laughs> so uh, another thing, man. Um, so I don't want to pitch you against him, but I've seen Aaron say quite a bit of stuff, man. Yeah, and you've been really nice. I just want to know where you where you at on that, man. So look, here's the deal. I, I actually I went after Aaron first. I'm actually really upset that I'm not facing Aaron in the first round. And I'm predicting that he beats Steve Trang in the first round. Mm -hmm. And and the only reason why I'm predicting that is is because I really want to face him in the second round. Because uh I, I I think Aaron and I would be a great matchup. Uh because I think we have two different styles. Um, I think Aaron is like the super energetic, like Yo, 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 check this out, check this out, check this out. You know, like that's how he is. And and I'm not that guy. I'm more relaxed, composed. And I would like to see how those two different styles kind of uh, translate with sellers because I've, I've actually never seen Aaron and close with somebody. But, um, you know, I, I, I've been I've been giving Aaron a, a pretty hard time during this uh, whole thing. I actually made the little meme where I'm giving him the Stone Cold Stunner. Uh, I'm him, nicknamed him the peasant Aaron Bevins, trying to become a king in this competition. But uh, I love Aaron; he, he's a great guy. And we got I a few minutes. We got a few minutes. Let me ask another question before we get to log off here. So, question is: Seller wants too much for their property. Do you use multiple exit strategies, not just cash offer or wholesale close? Absolutely. I just said that. I mean, I just got off of one where you know we were off in seller finance. I'm sitting mm -hmm. in a house sub too. But uh, hey, look, you got to understand those strategies before you go offer them. So. Don't just go out and, and start offering sub two uh, because you saw it on a Facebook group and you thought it sounded cool. You have to actually educate yourself. That's so true, man. That's so true. We'll be trying to educate people on that. But, you know, wholesaling is fantastic. We know it is. But having different uh, extra strategies, identifying properties for different types of strategies, I think that's where it's at. I know you guys are big on that. And, and, and uh, so, look, man, I hope you do well. <laughs> hey, I mean, man. We got, we got about two more minutes, uh, RJ. And he, uh, let's do a little bit of smack talking, man. I know you think you're going to win, and all the best of luck to you. Who would you think is being in second place? Uh, second place. If I had to pick anybody, I'd pick Chris Jefferson. Um, you know, he, he's been in this game a long time. I think he's mm -hmm. a, a different uh, silent assassin. People are kind of underestimating both of us, I feel like. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I think the finals, if I had to predict the finals right now, I'd say it'd be myself, Chris Jefferson, and uh, and Keith Everett. Those those right. would be my top three. One more question here. How do you break the ice? First question, how do you break the ice when you're making your cold call? What's that first question you ask? I mean, just just be real. I mean, you know, if you, if you call a tired landlord and, you know, he's kind of a big bully guy, just don't beat around the bush, get right to it. But hey, if you're calling, calling a sweet old lady, you know, ask her how her day's going and, and just be gentle. There's not, there's not one way to do this. You're a human, they're a human. Just remember that and just be yourself and treat them the way you would want to be treated and gauge your audience. That's the big key here. It's not a I script like what, or anything like that. I like what you said because we're real big on tonality here and, and, and matching you know, a person's vibe, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So, so we're real big about that. So I like that. Man. I like that. So I hope you do well, man. Any final well, words? Yeah. I'm bringing home the championship to Texas. I'm telling you that right now. And, and as far as smack talk goes, I mean, look, hometown boy, Donovan Ruffin knew to get out of this competition. That's why he left. Cause he knew that's why I was in there and he knew he couldn't <laughs> compete against me. I'm surprised Quito's and the peasant didn't drop out either. But uh, hey, I got some I got some Cheetos coming away for Q, so he drops out of the competition, um, and I'm I'm bringing home the titanium belt to to Texas. So, so you're saying San Antonio ain't gonna represent? I, hey, I, y'all can come up and you can see the belt when you come up to DFW. Okay. <laughs> you got two. We should have had three. Someone in our office should have been on there, but it's okay, man. We'll do it for 2021. Uh, Bates, man, you guys know now. RJ Bates, man, thanks for being on here. Uh, we got here shots fired, man. Shots fired. And, of course, Steve is next. And Steve, uh, I think he's ready to do so. RJ, man, appreciate you having me on here. Good luck. Right, Olympics 2020, buddy. Steve, how you doing? Doing good, Harry. What's up, Steve? So I got you a problem. You've been tuning in? How's everyone spec talking? Uh, who called me short? I think it was, uh, think it was Bevins. It was Bevins, yeah. I said you were tall because you're taller than me, man. Oh man. All right. 
See. All right. All right. So first question, Steve. Uh, we got 10 minutes of guys who are watching on YouTube, Facebook, and all the other social media platforms. Steve Trang in the house. Those are Olympics 2020. One of the contestants. They're calling you the OG. They're calling you. He's been doing this for, for years. I call him an OG, man. Charles coined the OG. Steve Trang. Yeah. First question, Steve. What do you do different that's going to make you win Closer Olympics 2020? Uh, you know, truth be told, I had a chance to study from all these other guys. So honestly, selfishly, I'm actually kind of excited about the Olympics because I'm going to get to learn from these other guys, see what their other tactics are. So I can't say what I'm, how I'm different than them, but I can say what's different about me and our style in general. And as that we're laid back, you know, we just, we take it easy and we're going to find our way in. It's kind of like, um, you know, judo, right? I, I'm not, I'm not applying force. I take what you give me. And I'm going to use a red back against you. That's, that's our style. All right. We don't push. Yeah. We just we just absorb. Can you can you share? I, I heard you on Bevin's show, and you shared some really awesome stuff. Can you real quickly just give a couple examples of how how you do that? I mean, I I can't put it in the words that you did so yeah. eloquently, but it was really interesting the way you the way you take on a deal. Yeah, so I would say one of our, our favorite tactics is just learn helplessness. You know, where I'm just this lost puppy dog. So if you're going to lie to me, I used to like struggle because like, how do you call a prospect a liar to the face? Like you're just going to stand there, look me in the eye and lie to my face. And I would just sit there. What else can you do? It's a prospect. So now someone lies to me. I'm just going to fall back. And I'm just like, okay, uh, I'm really confused. Um, when I spoke to you earlier, you know, when we first sat down, you said, you know, you were going to tell me you're going to say yes, you're going to say no. And either way, it was totally fine. You had shared that you were going to, you know, make it do something today. And you said there was nothing else that can get in the way. And now you're telling me there's two other investors like, help me out. What did I miss? I love that. And something I'm going to sit there we... quietly. I'm not going to let them <laughs> out of it. <laughs> yeah, I love that because something that I always tell my people here is, like most people have compassion, they have a sense of empathy, and 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 they don't want to. Uh, if somebody's being mean to you and you're being nice, they're gonna. Most people are gonna calm calm back down, you know. And and uh, I like that that style, man. You're, that you're talking about because it's, it's it's really calm. It puts everybody at ease. Yeah. So what can you add to that? Just so people get some value out of this thing. So here's one, and I don't share this a lot. I mean, this is for like the premium paying members, but you know, I love you guys. I'm going to share this with you. Right. All right. So we talked about it in the very beginning of the appointment, right? Yes or no. And that was it. So we get to the very end and they tell me, you got to think about it. So I'm going to say, Charles, um, you need, you need to think about it. Okay. So, uh, is it, is it the process you're not comfortable with? And you would say, I'm asking you, like Charles, is it is it the process you're not comfortable oh, with? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, you know, I just I'm look. I'll just, just say look. it's not the process, right? I just okay. really need to think about it. All right. Anything about it? I, okay. So, okay, then maybe it's, it must be the price. You're not comfortable with the price. And you, you, you tell me you still need to think about it, right? Yeah. I get it. It's me. <laughs> no, it's not you. No, it's not you. Is that, how, is that the reaction they get? And now you're gonna know what the problem is. You're gonna feel like a piece of crap letting me sit here like a piece of crap. I feel bad right now. Yeah. <laughs> you made me feel bad. I was like, am I missing something here? Yeah, no, no it's not you. It's wow, so, they would not be able to sleep if you go home, like you're like they're picturing you crying in your car on the way home. I like that. I like that. I, I felt it, man, right now. I did feel yeah. that. I mean, well, uh, I heard you say tonality is important. This is all in the tone. Let me, let me throw a question in real quick. The question is, um, how did you initially overcome your fear or any fear before and during the call? Now, you've been doing this for a while, but if you can remember back then, how did you yeah. overcome that fear? What do you got to do to get that mindset ready to start making calls? Uh, well, first, I would look at my bank account. Right. Because normally if you're cold calling, there's a reason why you're cold calling. Like eventually, you know, you don't cold call forever. So if you're cold calling, there's a reason. 
right? So you can look at it two ways. You can look at the negative, which is your bank account. Hopefully the bank account's not actually negative, but it's not where you want it to be. And then the positive is that you want, like you've got ambitions, you get because you didn't get into this business to be a regular guy. Like no one wholesaling to make 40,000 a year, right? So there's two things you gotta look at. You gotta look at the negatives, like reason why you're doing this and you're tired of whatever you've got, you know, you're tired of being sick and tired, right? You, you, that's the expression people say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. Or you've got ambitions and you're not here to live a nine to five regular life. So those two, but I can tell you, I have an advantage. I'm lucky. My first job out of high school was uh, telemarketing. Mm -hmm. awesome. I just sat on a dial. I sat on a predictive dialer. That's what they called it back then. It was a predictive dialer. I was playing credit cards, magazines, um, encyclopedias, kids' books. And I still remember, like, I would follow beats because, you know, the people that had ESPN the magazine, and they do. So what happens? ESPN the magazine takes their data, gives it to us, like, go get them back. And the prices they were giving, I was like, man, I have ESP in the magazine and I don't pay that price. What the heck? I have to let my subscription lapse to this price. <laughs> so, you know, I would say I have, I'm, I'm lucky and not everyone will look at it this way, but I'm lucky in that my first job was telemarketing. That is. No, I'm sure that's very yeah, helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I tried telemarketing when I was young and I couldn't succeed at it, man. Trust me. I, I got mad because they were listening to me. But I wish I, wish I would have done it for at least. A, little, a lot longer than I tried, man. But and it's eight bucks an hour out of high school. Eight bucks an hour telemarketing. It was a terrible yeah. job with terrible pay. So, Steve, who do you think? Who are you facing in uh, first round? I don't even care who I'm facing in the first rounds. I mean, Aaron's done. Like, let's just. <laughs> I'm worried about the second round. Who's second round? Who are you, who are you predicting go to second round? Oh man, Keith. I want. I've told Keith. I want him. Okay. But I want him. So, to, so I, 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 I got a question. Out in the second round of his own event. I got a question, Steve. So I know there's guys from different areas, but there's a lot of guys from from Arizona and and some guys from Texas. Mm -hmm. Is this going to turn out to be a Texas Arizona matchup, man? Yeah, just don't make it like the Spurs versus the Suns. <laughs> <laughs> or does he? Or do we have a chance, man? Does Texas have a chance here, man? Oh, of course, Texas has a chance. Look, Phoenix. I always argue is the most competitive. But if it's not the most competitive, it's top three. Texas is the same, right? I mean, I have in our coaching program. I look at the cities that you know we have students, and it's always Houston and Dallas. These are the two areas that are always trying to get better. And we have students in, in, in San Antonio too. But I'm just saying, there's more of them in Houston and Dallas. And I think they just have to level up more to compete. Just like in Phoenix, you can't just walk into Phoenix. And try to be a wholesaler. When people say they want to do a second market in Phoenix, I just say, all right. Although I will tell you, Steve, I will tell you, we bagged some deals in Phoenix before. Yeah. <laughs> Last time. Let me see Last some HUDs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we got we got about two minutes left. Let's make sure the next person's on. Uh, we got about two minutes. Uh, real quick, a lot of smack talking going on. I don't see much coming from your end. He's up. I don't see much coming from here. What are your thoughts on this whole smack talking? I love trash talking, and I, I love trash in the face. Right? I mean, when I'm talking to Aaron, I'm talking to RJ, and you should see it in our group chat. There's a lot more <laughs> smack talking. So I'm all for it, but it's a lot more fun doing it to your face, right? When I'm beating you and letting you know that I'm winning. That's when it's the most fun. How are you preparing for uh, 2020? Are you making more calls throughout the day now or are you just going to go in and do what you do? Oh, man. I, I've been telling these young cats, like, I haven't haven't talked to a seller in two years and I'm still going to win without practice. I might warm up for five minutes. Okay. I might practice for five minutes on Saturday. I'll still pick well, the young cats. We're winding down to the last 30 seconds or so. Any last words? Uh, if you guys haven't bought yet, you guys are crazy. Like, this is – an unbelievable value for nine bucks. So if nothing else, you guys should tune in so you can watch me demolish Aaron <laughs> on Saturday morning. I'm going to say something. <laughs> All these people that are coming together on this Closure Olympics, they are people from uh, that I know uh, for, uh, around the country, man, that, that will pay big money just to come see any one of these guys. 
you're going to get them all their skills on full blown display. Plus, you got the big judges, you know, Maxwell, Carlos Reyes, and Brent Daniels. I mean, it's a must watch, man. So, all right, man. Well, that's it, Steve. Uh, time's pretty much up. We got our boy Keith next. Steve, good luck. Close Olympics 2020. Best of luck to you. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, buddy. Thank you. Let Keith know I'm going to knock him out in the finals. <laughs> King Closer, man. He here, man. King Closer, how you doing, man? What's hey, up, man? man? Doing good, man. How y'all doing today, man? I got the oh, same man, clothes y'all got on, man. We, we doing good, man. There's a lot of smack talking going on here, man, but we're here to talk facts. A lot of heat, man. A lot of heat, a lot of heat you, know, man. Man. you know, people going to say what they say, man. You know, you know, Steve, man, I think he may want to warm up more than five minutes, man. You know, <laughs> Especially that may cause in two years. That's, that's hey, a dangerous game right there. That's a so dangerous I want to ask you a question, man. You're from, you're from Bama, right? I'm actually from Ohio originally. I've been in Bama for 11 years now. Are you going to represent Ohio or Bama? Bama. We, we, we you know, we represent Bama. That's where we're coming so, from right now. So, so I, was, I was telling Steve, you got a lot of Arizona boys, Texas boys. Is Bama going to bring it, man? Hey, man, they know what time it is. These guys, listen, one thing about it, you know, each one of these guys that took jabs at me, you know, coming into this thing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really, man, I've been in this, you know, this space of, you know, showing my skills and everything, you know, since like last September-ish, you know what I mean? So I'm not new to the game, but I'm new to the, you know, to the personal brand. You know, they they know what time it is, man. I just showed, I didn't, I took calls on live for six months. They seen me for six months. So it's no secret. These guys know what I'm coming with. Uh, It's not, I mean, I'm not, I don't really get too much into smack talking too much. I just speak on facts, man. I'm just ready to go. I'm tired of, Having to go to sleep, you know, looking at it, I'm ready to, I'm ready to get it in, man. I'm ready to, you know, to display my skills and uh, just show what I'm about, man. That's it. It's well, that simple. I would tell you this, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I think I'm pretty good on the phone, but I'd hate to be going up against you, man. It's going. I mean, it, it's. I say this, and and I, I just, I love people first and foremost. So I know that we saying that we, you know, I'm, I'm versus Adrian or. Just like you said, you want to face in the championship, but at the end of the day, yeah, we're talking a little smack, but my focus is on the sellers. You know, I'm, I'm ready to get on the phone with somebody. I'm looking for somebody that I can absolutely help. Yeah, I mean, we're we going against each other, but really we're going against the sellers, really. So I'm not too much worried about that. You know what I mean? I, I like that. I like that, man, because you got your eye on the – you got your eye – not only on, on on the competition, man, but on the on the focus, which is the people, man. And yeah. so far, you're the first one that said that. But I want to ask you something. Yeah. Remind us who you're going up against. I'm going against Adrian Salgado, born closer. All mm -hmm. in, all in representative, man. Shout out to all man. in. Uh, it's yeah. definitely going down, man. You going up against one of them all in boys, man? What you gonna do, man? Hey, he and I'm gonna be honest with you. He is a closer. That's what make this first round I, like everybody will tell you the guy I'm going against. This is like a championship round type of matchup. You know what I mean? It's a reason why these guys is, you know, getting on private jets, being in Royce Royces and Lambos. It's a reason why they're doing that because they got a monster team. So think about it. I'm going against a top hitter. So that means I got to bring my game. I can't sleep on it. That makes I sense, man. That makes sense. So quick question, man. What are you going to do or what do you do differently that's going to separate you from the others? Just be myself, you know, just be myself. I think, and, and I think that being myself will be different because I feel like a lot of people, they may start trying to do stuff that they ain't been doing. And they just because it is a matchup, I'm just going to hear, I just want to strictly be exactly what I've been this whole time. That's it. I'll be mad at myself if I wasn't being myself. I just need to be myself and just do what I've been doing. You know what I mean? Next question, man. When you're making that first cold call or any cold call, how do you break the ice? What's the first question to do so? Man, I just get on the phone. Hey, how you doing today? You know, they're going to respond back. Hey, it sounds like you're having a pretty good day over there. Well, my name is Keith, and I'm actually calling with Hometown Cash Buyers. I know you've been speaking with my partner such and such, and I just want to give you a quick call. I didn't want to take up too much of your time. I just need about five to ten minutes. I uh, just want to ask you a couple questions about the property, and I just want to see if I can, you know, add some value to you today. That's all I'm looking to do. Just give me about five minutes of your time. If I'm, if I'm speaking to you over ten minutes, it's because you wanted me to be. I like that, man, because that's that's what I tell my people here. You, you got to know your craft, man. That came out so smooth, you know, just so smooth. And the confidence just comes comes out, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it makes a lot of people want to listen to you. I heard you got a hitter over there at Manny, man. I heard a lot about Manny. You know, yeah, Manny, boy, I haven't met him yet, but I heard a lot of good things about him, man. So I was, I was about to do a petition, man. Our boy was overlooked, man. 
I'm hey. trying to get some signatures, about 20,000 signatures, get a petition to get him on there, man. But hey, real closers, man, real closers, man. Trust me, man. So his name have came up a couple times. A couple guys uh, mentioned him to me, and I'm, you know, hey, shout out to him, man, for sure. Definitely. Right, next question we got quite a few people watching on Facebook. We got quite a few people watching on YouTube. Next question here. How do you initially overcome your fear or any fear before the call and during the call? Well, I just look at it like this. I ain't going to die. You know what I mean? It's that simple for me. I tell myself, I, I really do pre-call affirmations. Like, you know, lately my, pre my pre-call affirmations have changed up a slight bit. Before somebody answers the phone, I tell myself, I'm the king closer. I'm the king closer. There's nobody else better than you. You're the king closer. Solve the problem. You know, you know, you're the best one for this right now. Then they answer the phone. Hey, how you doing today? I'm ready now. I already then put it in my mind that I'm the king closer. So if I'm the king closer, if I'm the best closer in the world, then that mean I got to do the best job. It's just that simple. I like you know? that, man. I like I, that. I, honestly, I get on the phone and I think about solving the problem. I don't think about money. I try to figure out how can I uncover this seller's pain and how can I see the knife in a little bit and just switch the knife a little bit and bring all the pain out of the seller. And then I don't just, you know, I don't just just throw out benefits. Oh, I can uh, give you moving expenses. No. Everything that I throw out is based on the seller's problem. I'm solving yeah. the seller's problem. I'm not I'm not just trying to go down my script or whatever I like to do just because it sounds good. What is your problem? Let me hear it out. I listen to the seller. And then guess what? Now I come back around when I make my offer. It's based on the seller's problems. You see what I'm saying? So you got to think about it. You may throw out some great benefits to the seller, but what if that ain't even a problem? So now you're just throwing out moving expenses and they never said that they had them. They never, they never said that they needed moving expenses. That's that's real, man. That's you got to listen in, man. I'm a yeah. great listener. You know what I mean? And it's not even just with real estate. I listen to my lady. I see what's her love languages, and that's the same thing with the seller. What are they languages? How can I speak to your language so that way that we can get the deal closed for you? Well, I tell you right now, man. It sounds like you're ready for this closer Olympics, man. I tell you that. Yeah, I tell you right now, man. Yeah, I hate to be going up against you, man. Now, let me get some few more questions in here. My boy Jay Johnson. My Let's boy Jay Johnson says. What's the most difficult rebuttal you come up against? Uh, who Jay Johnson asked a good question. Um, what's the most difficult rebuttal you come up against? Um, oh man, I would say, man, I didn't went up. Um, that's a good question, man. I honestly, yeah, let me rephrase that question, man. Yeah, are you more comfortable, man, calming down? A person who's uh, who's who's pissed off, who, who doesn't see an out, or a person who's just very informative and they're just challenging you each time. I like the person who challenged me. I like red type of sellers, man. They're my favorite sellers uh, because you know I I, I look at it, uh, just another thing, right? So the thing about it is, you know, every great closer know this one thing: when you first get on the phone. You know, not only am I thinking about how to solve their problem, but I'm trying to figure out which personality type is I'm talking to right now. Yeah. You know, you know, is this a red seller, which is very aggressive? Is it a yellow seller? Is they emotional? Because the way I, I, I strategize what I'm getting ready to do is based off their personality type. You know what I mean? If you know you got somebody who's analytical, it's a chance that you may like I ask them before I get into the property condition. I like to ask every seller. Hey, quick question before we get into the condition of the property. Is there anybody other than yourself that's a decision maker on the property? I want to make sure that I'm showing them the proper respect and I'm not stepping on their toes. Because if they're a decision maker along with yourself, it's obviously that you respect and you value their opinion. I want to make sure I'm showing them the proper respect like I'm showing you. Are you the only decision maker on the property? You see what I'm saying? I ask that before I get into the condition because I don't want to get all the way down the, you know, down the line trying to get it closed up. And now they need to speak to their lawyer. Now I need to speak to my spouse. You see what I'm saying? I try to eliminate that off top. You know what I like? What I hear what you're saying, man, is something that's real big, man. People just don't really grasp this. This is much more than just real estate, man. It's much more than real estate. Mm. You got to understand people. You got to understand what people are thinking, concepts, attitudes, yeah. character, their tonality. And, and that's what I like what you're saying right here, man. You, you, yeah. You're just not thinking about numbers or real estate. You're thinking about the person, their solution. You know, what solutions do they need? And that's, yeah. that's what makes a good closer, man. Yeah, and, and another thing is having a good awareness, man. A great closer is not nobody who closed on the first time. A great closer is having the awareness and can recognize when it's time to go, on, go for the kill 
And then some people, like I'm dealing with a seller right now, I don't just make calls all day, but it is specific situations that my team, you know, I may have to take over. And this lady, she's very, very emotional. Her husband is, uh, you know, he, he, he battling cancer. She's taking care of him. And at the same time, guess what? She just has surgery herself. So how am I going to try to go in and close them the first time, knowing that they're so emotional? Sometimes you got to take their hand and walk in the park with them. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes you may not have to do it. You know, you got to let Man, Keith, Keith we're running out of time, man. We got man, our boy next, yeah. but man, Keith, we gotta, yeah, have man. we gotta get you back on a full podcast, man. Keith, tell man, tell man, man. Hey, hey, made me that promise. I need to come up here and kick it with y'all, man. So yeah, we man. Yeah. last 10 seconds, man. What you gotta tell the people that's watching? Hey, closes olympics.com 97 bucks. Bring your sellers. We close them, you keep the profits, and we're gonna do a lot of giveaways, man. It's going down this Saturday, it will be history. So just tune in. Keith, man, best of luck to you. Close the Olympics, man. Hey, thanks, All fellas. Right. We'll be to y'all. All right. Yo, yo. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good, doing good. How about yourself? How about yourself? Oh, man. Just hearing a lot of smack talking from a lot of people, man. The man himself, man. It's no joke, you know. I mean, fellas, you know how, how it goes. Let me get into this real quick, man. Because I've been watching you for many, many years do live calls. So I like everybody, man, that, that, that you know, we talk to. And I got a lot of respect for everybody. But I just, I don't know, man. I have a feeling, man. I have a feeling. That's all I got to say. Feeling, man. A, lot of, a lot of people watching this on Facebook and YouTube. Let's go ahead. We got, we got nine more minutes left for my boy Elijah. Man, let me ask you the first question. What do you do or what's your special technique that's going to make you uh, different from the other cold call closers? That's a good question. What separates me from a lot of the competition right now is that you got several different pieces, right? One, it's kind of like if, if you're a rookie in basketball versus playing against Jordan, who's been in the game for a decade plus, he has certain skill sets that other people don't have. He has certain experience that that's, that doesn't show up in courses, doesn't show up um, when you have all the time in the world. Sure, I can close the deal. I'll call you back 19 times. Fine. However, when you only have 30 minutes on the clock, have, I mean, think about it. For me to be in the game for 16 years, it's going to be, think about how many hundreds of thousands of no's I went through. All right, just for me to close 750 plus deals, I went through hundreds of thousands of no's. So as a lot of my guys, well, I have respect for all of them, they just haven't been through the tried and tested calls and setbacks and negative, uh, uh, negative people, powerful people, people i've dealt with all types of sellers so my ability to diagnose the seller and close it and adjust to it i think it's going to give me a big competitive advantage that they're not really anticipating oh, so what you're saying is you're like kobe bryant on that last where he did it by himself against the celtics <laughs> <laughs> he handled, handled 81 points you know i think i think what's really going to make things different is and top of like uncle charles you see me you see me make the calls you know you saw me make a hundred plus Facebook calls, but nobody was making calls online. I was like one of the first people to just start making calls, and I felt the anxiety and the pressure. And I only had like a hundred people watching at a time until like later on. And so I, I think by me having that experience, knowing because a lot of these guys, don't get me wrong, you know, you're on the phone, you might say some great things, you know. Sure, I cover all the costs. I move you out. I'll move you into a new place. Well, are you sure you're able to do that? You better, because everybody's listening to every single word you're saying. So you better be 100% and ready to dial in and deliver on what you say you're going to do. Uh, Facebook question here. How do you break the ice? First question when you're making that cold call, what do you do to break the ice? Oh, man. Just kind of like just like when you talk to somebody like yourself. You know, When you're cold calling, when you're talking on the phone, you want them to feel like this is a long lost friend from high school. They, you're like, who is What? Who is this? That if you get that, that 10 second window just open up to 30 seconds. Hey, how's it going, Mike? Oh, did you tell me, did you receive the letter I sent you? Oh, you gotta act like that, Mike. Did you just forget me that fast? Is it your mailman? Did you piss your mailman off? No, no, honestly, let me ask you a question. And now I'm advancing the ball right off the bat. Mm. I like that, man. I like that. So I'll tell you this right now. Let me ask you a question. Who are you going up against first? I'm going against um uh, Quentin Flores, you, Quentin and I, in the first round, I know, I know he's San Antonio family over there. I know he's a family, but he has to go down with the rest of them. I'm sorry. I, I know Q, man. He's he's good at what he does. 
And uh, so I, I asked Mr. Trang in this earlier, got a lot of Arizona boys, got the Texas boys. Do we have a shot to go up against boys out of Arizona, man? I think, um, I think, I mean, you guys got a lot of heat coming out of Texas. I mean, you got Aaron, RJ Bates, you know, um, you got Q. I just think, I mean, Arizona's like the real estate records park. You know, you make it out here in Arizona, you can make it. Hey, we got so many gurus out here. It's like just your average lead is tough. You know, I mean, you got the all in guys, you got Steve Train, and you got, and you got myself. So I think it's going to be really hard to, um, to, to pry the pride the price off some of these deals. So you're saying Arizona's going to take the crown first? I, I think I think we're going to take the first round, but I think it's um I think that's going to happen. However, I think um Antonio, who's um stepping in for Donovan's number one um number one hitter, his not top closer, he's going at Steven Morales, and Steven Morales is a, is a formidable matchup too. But I think that might be a sleeper round. I think I think Texas might. Soup up one right there. I think you might get on the board with that one for sure. What do you do? A question earlier was uh, posted on you. What do you do to get the get yourself hot to make that first call? Because you know, a lot of people who are aren't that good at making cold calls for whatever reason, they got to get hyped. They got to do something. What do you? What advice you got for those guys? Well, I'm just thinking about all the deals Mike and Uncle Charles close over there, and I'm like, <laughs> no, honestly, honestly, what I do, and I highly recommend people do this. I actually created pre-call affirmations, right? So I do affirmation myself regularly every morning, but I made specific pre-call affirmations just for, before I get on call, before I get my, I had my VAs doing these before they get on the call. Cause what we think about, we bring about, and then you do what's called a confidence transfer. I mean, I got vision boards. Oh, I was making sure you got some of my vision boards. I mean, I got vision boards all over because I want to remind myself of all the times I executed, all the times I did things I only thought I was going to be able to do. And I was able to deliver. I was able to execute. And I, I tap into that place and remind myself, nobody's built like you. You designed yourself. And then it's time to execute. Go and do what you've been born to do. So I really, really think, I mean, I, I've been watching you for a long time, you know, and uh, when you had your tribe back back in the day, you know, I don't know. I, I think it's different now. But, but I know you would get on those calls. I know that's difficult. And I will see you close people, man. And and you got that vibe. You come across really strong on the phone and smooth. And and uh, man, it's gonna be tough, man. But I, I want to say that I think you're gonna be, I, I, you're gonna be up there, man. One of the last ones, if not the last one, man. Come on, <laughs> Uncle Charles is giving it to me, baby. Give Elijah, me. come on. Yes, you. I, I don't. I know everyone thinks they're gonna win the competition. So we're gonna say that you're you're gonna win the competition. Who would you who would you think would be in second place? Second place because how we have it set up, first round on Saturday is uh 12, 12 closers. You know, we'll down to six, uh, six matchup, mm -hmm. and then that's gonna be six. And then the final six there's gonna be three matchups, and that's gonna be worth down to three. So it's gonna be the final three. So I I think I'm definitely taking gold. I think I'm taking the. Uh, I mean I just think I, I I'm not. That's the thing. I apologize. I have strong convictions. And, and, and a body of work to support that. Um, so I think I got gold as king closer. I think Keith is going to come in number two. And then I'm going, I'm, I'm going. Who was that number two? I missed that. Who was number two? Keith, Keith who was just on here. I will say Diddy. Yeah, he's, he's, he's strong. Really, really talented. He can talk to a lot of different type of, uh, uh, different type of sellers. He's only, he knows that I diagnose and he put his skill set on the line. And I think um, the, the sleeper who I have in the third position I'm gonna go. Like I said I'm gonna go with Antonio. I think Antonio is gonna overtake Stephen Morales. I think he's gonna be one in the second round, and he's gonna be there in the third, in the final round with us. I think it's gonna be us three. Let me ask this last question here. It comes from my boy uh, Frank Tovar. Man, what are you drinking every day, man? You got nothing but unlimited energy, man. <laughs> I drink. I, I drink a glass of motivation and, and passion in the morning, and, and I swallow it down. I'm swallowing up, um, objections and I'm spitting out rebuttals. Consistent. All right. So we got we're winding down to the last minute, man. Closers Olympics for for the people who, who bought the ticket or for the people who haven't bought the ticket, man. What can they expect to get out of it from watching? Wow. So not only I mean, not only are you going to be able to learn from twelve different closers, you get to see twelve different styles. See exactly how do we uh, how do we close? How do we pause? How we take aggressive 
personality, how he takes a simple personalities. Then in addition to, you get able to see exactly how do we operate and, and diagnose sellers, see how people get stuck in friend zone, see how people mm -hmm. are ask the right question, paint the picture, poke the paint, overcome the objection, and get to the close. I think that's really extremely valuable. They, if they go to the close of the Olympics and before Friday, they get the ticket by Friday, they're able, there's a three-day limited playback, so you're able to watch this and get um, edutained. We're picking, we're nominating five families um, who've been affected by COVID-19 to be able to donate to. And in addition to, you go to the close of the Olympics right now so that you can submit up to 50 leads you get to have 12 of the top closers in the country close your leads and you keep 100% of it live while you get educated on how to close more efficiently. It's an ultimate virtual sales competition. I'm so honored to be a part of it. I thank you guys for supporting the family. I want to I just want to show them how to turn up the hustle. Hey, I want to uh, – Keith called us about this. He said, hey, man, can you guys do this? I want to tell you something. We were like, yeah, let's get everybody on here, anybody we can. And uh, we're just happy you guys let us be a part of it. You know, our little part of, of promoting the, the, the Close Olympics. Much, much uh, um, love to you, man. I, I'm partial to the OGs. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, you know what I, I, know you I know you come from the school I came from. Yes, sir. So, you know, I mean, I'm partial to San Antonio, but, but you know, good luck to you, man. I appreciate that. Make sure, you bring, make sure you bring the heat, man. Bring the heat. Elijah, I got one more thing before we log off, man. This comment from my boy Miguel Diaz. Close Olympus is missing one master code caller, man. Manny Cash, man. Just gonna throw it out there. Just throw it out there, man. 2021. 2021, we got Manny Cash on, on the lookout. We've been talking with him, and a lot of people recommended him too as well. We have Pace Morby. I mean, this certain people, we're gonna make sure 2021 is gonna be just as fire. It could only be one king closer in the country. Only be one. So we go. he's a Venezuelan caballo de guerra, but you're the one from Arizona. I hope I hope you do well, man. I hope you do well, brother. Elijah, with that being said, man, best of luck to you. Close Olympics 2020. We'll see you next time, buddy. Thank you, Kings. Be blessed. Q. Yo, what up, G? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm big chilling over here at Aaron's office, kicking it. Aaron's there. So, so we got a, a little disclosure here, man. So we started two minutes late with you, man. So we're on time with everyone. So we make sure you get that extra two minutes. It's all good. What's up, so, guys? Uh, man, dude, uh, <laughs> you ready for this, man? Yeah, bro. Come on. Are you, gonna, are you gonna represent the tone all day, bro? I'm gonna I'm bring it for Texas, dude. I'm taking that belt back home. Well, with that being said, man, let's get that first question underway, man. Everyone who's watching, there's quite a few guys watching on Facebook. There's more of you guys watching on YouTube. Uh, we are live on YouTube and Facebook. Please ask your questions. Go ahead and drop into the comment section. First thing first, Q. What do you do? What type of caller are you that makes you different from the other co callers? Bro, honestly, man, like when it comes to cold calling, I just it's like this thing where I can just connect with people, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure everybody that's watching this video like you, you, right? You watching this video right now. All of y'all can feel my energy, right? Right. I know you can. I know you can. With that being said, man, that right there is what gives me the, the ability to be able to close very, very swiftly without very little effort, man, without very little effort. And I love I love building relationships. That's something that I'm doing, right? The, the, the challenge that I think I'm going to have with this event is that I'm only given 30 minutes and that could be one phone call for me. But within that 30 minutes, I'll build massive rapport. The seller, if, whether they're a man or a woman, they're gonna wanna marry me after that phone call. On top of that, they're probably gonna invite me over for dinner. On top of that, I'm getting invited you know, to the barbecue, to the cookout. On top of that, I'm getting that property at 60 to 50 cents on the dollar or lower. So right. guys, you know, I'm super excited. You know, Elijah, <laughs> let's be real here, bro. Elijah ain't bringing nothing that I ain't ever pin up against, dog. And straight up, he may have 16 years in the game, but y'all already know, bro. Y'all already know. It only took me five years to build what I was building, right? I don't need 16 years to destroy this dude. So I'm super excited, oh, man. And I'm going to bring it back home to San Antonio because that's what it's about, baby. Hey, look, man. <laughs> you guys out of Texas? You guys out of Texas, man? You got to understand something, man. You know, this is a Lone Star State, man. We do one thing. We do one thing well, man. We do it big all the time. So y'all better represent, man. 
you already know. <laughs> Next question, man. Here we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How do you initially overcome your fear if uh, before and during the call? How do you overcome that fear? Because there's a lot of cold calls that they get kind of scared or nervous when they make that call. How do you overcome that? Dude, honestly, at the beginning, that's how it's always going to be. Like, I know I've seen Manny Cash cold call, right? And uh, seeing the dude transform from like being, you know, kind of weary on getting on the calls, right? To finding his voice. Hmm. That's the best part. You're never going to, you're never going to get over the fear. You just have to go in and do it. You just got to do it. And like, like I said, man, it's like reading a bike. It's like riding a bike, right? It's like riding a bike. Once you understand the, 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 you know, your physical capabilities, when you hop on that thing, you're going to go up a hill, down a hill, do flips, spin the wheel around. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, there, there comes a point in time after you've cold called for a very long time where it's second nature. And no matter who answers the phone, you got it because experience has led you to the call. You know what I mean? The Bro, I've talked to the mean investors. I've talked to uh, freaking like 100% knowledgeable investors. I've spoken with every single type of candidate, realtors, stubborn realtors. Uh, motivated sellers, old ladies, young people, everything. I, I've spoken to every single type of individual that you can, right? All of those things, it, it, there's like a pattern. There's like a pattern, right? Eventually, you know how to basically become a chameleon when you pick up the phone and you're able to handle that call. Let me ask you a question. And real quick, let people know two things. We're big on this and I want to know where you stand on it. Okay. Learning your craft, meaning learning all things that surround real estate and are about real estate and learning about people, people's character, people's personas. How how, how do those two things play into your way of, uh, of communicating with people over the phone when they're not looking at you? 100%. One of the things that people are able to pick up right away, this is the first thing, is when you're confident and you know exactly what you're talking about. That's what people like. Confidence, guys, makes people feel more comfortable when you get on the phone with them. When you connect with the seller, right? When you connect with the seller and they see how knowledgeable you are and you start throwing out resources, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things that I love, right? It's an arsenal that I now have on my belt. I spent some time with home buying, home selling. For like a week straight, I was at their office till like one in the morning being coached on how to do seller finance deals. And that is now part of my my negotiation strategy. And it's, it's something that other people just look away from almost like 90% of the real estate community looks away from getting creative with the deal. Let's be like real here. Right. And guys, the more knowledgeable that you are about flips, about rehab, about creative finance, about real estate law, about affidavits of airship, probate, everything, the easier that it is for you to connect with someone. Right. So that, I think that's a two part question, Charles, what was the second part? Well, just real quick on this. People think it just pops in your head. No, it takes a lot of work, a lot of studying, right? It does, dude. It does. And I'm always mastering my craft. You know, I ain't afraid to say, I ain't afraid to say I've been mentored, right? And like straight up, Charles and Mike, they mentored me in, into a craft that I never even thought existed. And because of that, I'm deadly now. You know what I'm saying? And that's so how, deadly, how, win. how deadly are you going to be representing not the black and gold, but the silver and black? Here in San Antonio, what's up, man? Oh, dude, you already know, man. I'm taking that belt and I'm gonna walk straight into HPHS's office with it, bro. And I'm you gonna know, hang that thing on a plaque for y'all, dog. I'm gonna right. say I brought this home for Charles and Mike, bro. You know what I'm saying? Turn up the hustle. Now, That's what we do in San Antonio. That's we turn up the hustle, bro. Turn up the hustle, he man. He has it all down, man. He has, man, you're convincing me. Let's ask the <laughs> question out here, man. Let's get a question. Next question is. How do you break the ice, man? That first question when you're cold calling, how do you break the ice? Now, immediately, guys, this is when you get into the qualifying process. You have to understand the way that the tonality is being set the moment that the phone is picked up. And that's the first thing I look at. The moment that my seller picks up the phone and I hear her voice, the tone, whether it's a dude, a chick, whatever, bro, uh, it don't matter. Once I hear that tone, I know how to approach the call. Guys, because once you understand the way that they speak, you can get an idea of their personality. It's very, very small. It's just like the smallest thing that you have to pick up. But before I ever even break the ice, I always start with tonality because I have to mirror this seller in a way. 
Imagine if your seller just straight up talked like this all the time. And then I came in with all this energy, like, what's up, man? That's yeah. overwhelming, right? That's yeah. overwhelming. It's crazy, guys. There's this dude at my, at my office. Shout out to Josh Hartman. He's this 19-year-old kid who just got a, out, of, out of college. He's, he's holding it down for the Infinity Cash Offer banner. And guys, uh, it's funny because he's been having trouble getting a deal, mainly because of his tonality, right? He just bagged the contract in Katy, Texas. The ARV is about 220. He got the contract at 110. And the guy has a dull voice just like Josh does. It's kind of funny. Literally, bro. And that's the thing right there. It starts with your tonality. When you break the ice, it's about understanding the personality that just got connected with you over the phone. People don't realize this, but it's the most important part. You start with tonality first, and then you move into the, com the, the conversation, which is, Hi, how you doing? My name is Quentin. Look, uh, me and my partners, we drove by this property over here. And uh, look, I'm buying one down the street. I'd love for the opportunity to give you an a, a proper and fair offer on your house. Would you be willing to hear me out for just five seconds? It's only going to take you five. You see that? That is an icebreaker right there. That's me. Is. See, as badass, man, uh, um, we've heard so many different concepts today, man. I just don't understand, man. If people don't sign up to watch this, you're going to get to watch some really awesome people, man. Just just embrace all these different types of strategies. But, uh, man, that's great. Two great answers. Any other questions? Yeah, we got uh, we got about a minute left, man. Uh, a lot of smack talking going on, man. Some some people are smack talking and some aren't. I see you participate in the smack talking, man. Just a little bit. Just a little just bit. A little bit. So you got I video don't really call it smack talk, and I call it confidence, bro. Actually, Godfidence, because I know okay. I'm gonna put my heart in there, bro. I got a question for you. Let's go. Let's go. What's gonna happen if you and Aaron Bevins have to go toe to toe, man? <laughs> <laughs> What's gonna happen, man? What? Are you guys? <laughs> are, you guys, are you guys gonna be co-champions or just gonna go or just gonna go? I don't know. Off, Honestly, it's not that bad. If I if I lost to Aaron, that'd be cool. I get to come in here and hang out with him, you know, I get to take the belt home if I want it. No. Yeah. Bar. <laughs> nah, man, you know that that's gonna be crazy, yo. That that's gonna be crazy. That's like Ed Hardy versus Jeff Hart uh Matt Hardy versus Jeff Hardy, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what you mean. Q wrapping yeah, up here, man. The last 30 seconds for the people who haven't bought tickets to close Olympics. What can they expect? What type of value can they get out of this thing? Uh, break it down for them, man. Guys, you're going to be learning so much from different people that are very successful in this business. And what I say by that, like, guys, like straight up, you're going to be learning negotiation, sales tactics, psychology. Tony Robbins says it best himself, right? He says, business is 80% your mind, psychology, and 20% implementing what you're actually doing, like money-making activities. You know what I'm saying? And guys, you're going to learn so much about the psychology behind sales. This is only going to elevate you, man. It's going to cost you one week of groceries. That's it. One week of groceries. And you're going to get thousands of dollars of information that's going to feed you eternally. And that's Dude, something that I truly believe, man. Let's face it, man. It's going to cost them one night at the theater, uh, <laughs> a couple of drinks. A couple that's drinks. It. That's it. You know I mean... mean? This is like a lot of value, man. So I go to the theater. I spend about 80 bucks, man. So it's a lot of value. You best know that we're going to be buying our tickets uh, today, I think, right? Or, today, or tomorrow. So, so uh, yeah, man. You guys need to join this thing. Well, yeah, I got to tell you, too, for, before right. I do, because I know you bring in the next person. Guys, uh, if you buy tickets right now, just message me right after, man. Even if you've already bought one, I'll give you my company's cold calling scripts. There's like 15 to 20 of them for every single situation, all right? So go to closeolympics.com, purchase your tickets, hit me up right after, and I'll take care of you, okay? Mike, Charles, dude, thank y'all so much for having me on again, man. Thank you. With that being said, man, we're rooting for you for uh, the, the San Antonio win. Uh, man, you, Aaron, anyone in San Antonio, we're voting, we're voting strong for you guys. Best of luck. Close Olympics 2020, buddy. Let's go. Daniel, how you doing? Doing good, man. How are y'all? We're good, oh, man. man. We're good, man. We just finished just hearing all the smack talking, all the cold calling <laughs> techniques, all the stuff. Well, who's going to win? Who's going to do that? But all of this cold closer Olympics, not available without the sponsorship of, of Propelio. How you yeah. doing, buddy? 
Doing great, man. I've been enjoying all the back and forth I've been seeing on social media, all the smack talking, all the all the memes coming around, and all the craziness that I've been seeing, man. It's been a it's been a lot of fun seeing all this coming around. Yeah, not everyone's doing it though. So not everyone's smack talking, but some yeah. are, some are. Yeah, to each their own. Have you see seen this stuff going back and forth between RJ and Aaron? I've seen that, but I'm saying not everyone's doing smack talking. I don't think I've seen Steven do oh. it. Uh, Trang, I don't think they've been smack talking. <laughs> We're gonna see who's gonna bring the pain, man. So, so, but uh, we want to get your Looking thoughts. To First of all, we know that Perpetio is sponsoring uh, heavily, and, and with these, this whole industry, especially jumped in with these Closer Olympics. Um, you know, you guys are doing a lot of stuff. You know, not only bringing content to the public with the academy and the, the software. And we want to talk to you about that shortly. But give us your thoughts on the Closer Olympics. Some of the players, and who do you think is going to take take it down, man? Who do I think is going to take it down, man? That is a hard choice, man. Maybe maybe I can go for my top three on the podium. Maybe I can go for my top three on the podium. I'm thinking I'm thinking one of the all in guys. Probably we got to have some Texas people in there. I, I, I'm I'm looking for some RJ. I'm looking for some RJ, maybe some Aaron or Q. Man, we got a bunch of Texas people in here, man. I got to have somebody from Texas on that podium. If I don't get somebody from Texas on that podium, man, I'm moving. I'm moving. <laughs> I couldn't move. I am lying. I'm, I, could, I couldn't uh, move. Texas is where I stay, by all means. It can't, it man, can't I know the all-in guys, they've got a solid – say it again? It can't be any worse than the What's Cowboys that? not doing anything since 94, man. Well, who's the Cowboys? <laughs> man, I'm not a football fan at all, man. But I want to see. I want to see one of my Texas guys bring that belt home, man. We've got three of us in the plate, man. There's three out of twelve. Y'all got a 25 percent chance. And since y'all are Texas, that's at least a 75 percent chance. Is it four or three? I think it's what? four. Uh, Donovan Ruffin's. Uh, I think it's four. It's four. Yeah, I just uh, we wanted to get everyone on this podcast, but you know we only have so much time to do this thing. So, uh, but yeah, man. Tell us more about Propelio and, and uh, Propelio sponsoring this Closer Olympics. Well, man, one of the things that I know that I struggled with getting started is I'm an introverted personality and the thought process. I remember the first time I sent out some pre foreclosure campaigns trying to nail short sales and I started getting leads coming back in and I was scared to answer the phone. And then I'd sit there and look at the caller ID and I'd sit there and I'd get all nervous about it. And I'd have to amp myself up to call that seller back just for the phone to go to voicemail. Like I'd spend a half hour like I'm going to call, I'm going to call, I'm going to call. And then I'd call him back and I'd go straight to voicemail and all that time wasted just getting over my nerves. All that to be said, man, like I really wish when I first got started, I would have had that. I would have had something like this that I could have looked at and just saw what what these conversations were like. Because as I got further and further into this business, man, you're just talking to people. You just got to really learn how to talk to people, figure out what their what their motives are, why they're why they're wanting to move, why they're wanting to sell. One of my closing moves is just education. Like I educate the seller. I like I, I go through and I try to show them through my education how how um, sophisticated I am in this business. And I'll go through, I'll work through options with them, and then it's just a matter of talking to them. And you got to get over talking to them. So having the opportunity to watch 12 professionals go in here, hop on the phone calls and see how they can word things where you may have been saying, you know, something in, in one way. And then you hear like a Keith Everett or, or a Quentin or an Aaron or a Steve or an RJ or any one of these other amazing people that are pull, pulling in on the Olympics. They go in there and they just say it a little different than you did. And when you hear them say that, that's like $10,000. And when then you yeah. hear another person say something, they're like, oh, wow, I never even thought of it that way. Like a seller hits up with an objection like, well, how am I going to move? And in the past, you just said, well, you get a U-Haul and move. Well, then you hear somebody come up in there. You hear, you know, you hear one of the all-in guys and they're all like, well, you know, if you need to move, well, then what we can do is we can help you out. We'll take some of the money, put it in an escrow, put in something here, right. bank, bank, right. bank, bank, and we'll get you moved. We'll take care of you. Well, it, until you heard somebody say that, you may have just not ever thought of it that way. Yep. So getting to see 12 different closers move through massive amounts of phone calls, you're going to get some value out of this. And when they're talking about the price point, they're talking about it at, I've dropped well over a hundred grand on my education and with over a hundred grand in my education, something like this was something I never even got with a hundred grand. So being able to see this is pretty amazing on my side. So I wanted to be a part of it and I wanted to sponsor it. Charles. Daniel's talking all kinds of stuff, man. I know, man. Yes, dude, you gotta do that. You gotta do this. Would it be exciting to see him making calls, man? I I think that uh, <laughs> it would have been really cool. Daniel would have been in there, man. You, you got it all, man. I mean, you're, you're I'm, I'm not closer, man. First of all, I want to say something, man. I, I like what you said because being, you know, sometimes when people are introverts, you know, mm -hmm. 
what I tell them, because we try to identify this here in the office, you know, what type of character you are. And like, if you're an introvert, man, you need to get really stout on education, man. You need to know your craft. That's how you're going to pull people in. If you have charisma, and you're not going person. I'm not saying don't learn your craft, but it's just a lot easier for you to get across to someone, you know, and I like that you mentioned that. I'll tell you the first time we saw you, you know, because Mike and I, we do a lot of creative stuff and we saw you and we we're like, what? This guy, I mean, this you were dropping some serious bombs. So it's news to me that you're. Well, I mean, I know you now, but really, it, I'm fine that you say you're an introvert because, man, you you drop a lot of information on people. Man. That's how that's how I move forward with the seller. Like I I don't really have all of the charisma and stuff. I mean, outside of when I have to turn on a personality, I'm, I'm kind of reserved and dry. But whenever I do get down with the seller, more often than not, I always move through open-ended questions. I love open-ended questions because guess what? As an introvert, I get to just shut up. I'll just ask a very broad open-ended question. It's like, can you tell me a little bit about the house? That's not a yes or no answer. And I'll just let them talk and talk and talk. And while they're talking, I'll do a little bit of investigation on my side, figure out what's going on. And then as they're talking, I will always come across another open-ended question and I'll let that seller just talk and talk and talk. Like these closers got 30 minutes. I'd probably burn up all 30 minutes with one seller, honestly, like I probably would, but I just let them talk. And as they're talking, I start uncovering more ideas and thought processes on what's the best scenario for me to help this homeowner out with. And as they start moving through it, like my, my, my extensive knowledge on the business allows me to open up and really shine as a professional. Cause when I start talking to that homeowner, they can tell that I know what I'm talking about and I can always lean on my experience and say, man, we can take care of this for you. Here are four different options I see based upon the conversation we've had that we can do to make this deal work out for you. How, how, how's this sound? And I just move forward like that. Well, man, Propelio has sure been heavily involved when it comes to close Olympics, man. And I'm glad that is, is doing so. Uh, but speaking on Propelio, the buzz in the real estate right. industry for the past couple of days is, wow, have you seen the new Propelio? You want to talk about that? Oh, yeah, I really do, man. This has been a few months in the making. Like we have put a lot of effort in this. But if anybody out there has ever had the opportunity to go to Propelio.com, man, we just released a massive new update. The system looks totally different. We've added a lot of extreme value, simplified the user experience, the user interface. And this is not the end of it. We have another update already in the works, working on right now. And our plans are to push that out ASAP. Within the next 45 to 90 days, I think Propelio will be a totally different product than what it was um you know 30 days ago and when i say that i mean better easier more intuitive more information quicker on the speed and more integrations between our product our mobile app and as well as the ability to pull stuff out through podio zapier and other integrations like that so for anybody that's ever gone to propelling like man it doesn't work in my market or it doesn't do this or it doesn't do that always come back. We are always innovating. We're always pushing all of our profit right back into the product. And never will there be a time where I sleep on this and say, I'm done. Propelio will forever be around. We'll be forever innovating. And there will always be a place in the marketplace with Propelio in mind. Oh, man. Charles and I and everyone here at the Home Bottom Sun office, man, we are very, very, very fond of Propelio, Propelio Academy, for the deals that we closed on all the transactions that we got from, you know, all over Texas to virtual wholesales, man, Propelio, is a great tool so for the guys who are watching there's quite a few on facebook there's quite a few of you guys on youtube you guys definitely go to propelio.com and don't forget about the academy guys the academy is free so much value being shared out there on that. yeah yeah so we just brought in a youngster out of a <clears throat> out of corpus christi and the first thing we did was put him on on uh the academy and some other videos how much does that did. cost you and it costs us anything and i'm going to tell you something it's been a week and a half and he's talking the lingo. He's under, he's understanding That's the language, awesome. you know. And it just helps so much yeah. when, when you can do that, you know. That is the first step to anything. Like whenever, like if I start talking about the equity markets, I start talking about calls, puts, spreads, naked condor or condors, iron, iron condors. I start talking about calendars and I start talking about strike prices. If people don't understand the equity markets, they have no clue what I'm talking about because it's a totally different language. I'm speaking English. 
but I'm speaking a totally different vocabulary that people do not understand. And one of the things that I've always told people is that if you're getting into this industry, the first thing you need to figure out is that language. So that way, when they are watching an HBHS podcast, when they are watching a Propelio podcast, and I start talking about, you know, a low equity seller that I might have to short or sub to the escrow and encumbrances, everything else that's popping up. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to have some difficulties with it, but I sub to wrap it. I can get a yield spread through arbitrage and we're knocking it out. I start throwing out stuff like that and people get lost. Well, if they yep. get lost, that's a good thing. You know, you're in the right room because you got to be putting yourself in the rooms where people are saying things that you have no clue what's going on because now you're rubbing shoulders with the right people. So if you're sitting there and you're like, what the hell is he talking about? Arbitrage yield spreads, sub two wraps, go hit up Google. One of my favorite mentors, start educating yourself on the, on the, on the verbiage so once you get a hold of that verbiage, you can actually start getting in there. And when they're listening to people like Charles and Michael having conversations, you're not just sitting there like, duh, you know, you, you, you've got the, you've got to get the vocabulary figured out. And that is one of the things that the Propelio Academy can definitely do for you free of charge, hundreds of hours of content available there, subject to wraps, wholesaling, apartment complexes, mobile home investing, pre foreclosures, tons and tons and tons of free actionable education. So Daniel, on the, I want to jump off for a second. I want to ask you a question. I've never asked you online because we, we've had you a couple of times in this podcast. And I, I've been meaning always to ask you, and I, and I never do. But with this with this uh, closure Olympics, there's a lot of people. I want to talk about that first. There's a lot of people that have come together to put this thing together. Not only the closers, but you know, you got you know Maxwell, you got Carlos Reyes, Brent Daniels, and then yourself is putting this thing together. How how uh, I mean. How big is that? I mean, you know, for you know, I come from the old school when you had a lot of people that were just single guys around the country, you know, and doing these big events. But how unique is this to bring guys from all around the country, put them together, and, and make this happen? Huh? Man, well, first off, we've got to give a shout out to the guys that put this on. This was an Aaron Bevins, Quentin Flores, Keith Everett, and Elijah Rubin. This is their production. And yeah. it was their their network that was able to pull this together. The Quentin, uh, the Quentin, uh, Aaron, uh, Keith, and Elijah. Thank you all for getting this put together, pulling Maxwell, pulling Reyes, pulling Brent Daniels, pulling myself all into this to get together. And, and when you look at this, the 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 why behind all of this is you guys like all of y'all watching right now all of y'all out there in this industry the goal is is to unite come together and help y'all out and you know what if there is and there always is political beefs between people and all that stuff but we set all of that aside because one thing we need to know for a fact that we're providing and helping as many people as we possibly can and you've got to let little stuff like that go to the side if you're going to try and help as many people as we're trying to help I like that. That's great. Yeah, it is, man. That's a great answer. I mean, uh, uh, you know, um, I, back in before the crash, you never would have seen this. And now, you know, and, wow. and, and not everybody talks to each other, but but I think in the last three years, everybody around the country is talking to each other. Um, some get along, some don't. But but to bring all these people together to do this, where where the regular, you know, I'm not gonna say the regular folk, but the people that are just getting into the business, the people that want to do better in the business, the people that are spectators to be able to watch all these players around the country do this i think it's just really it's, it's really awesome man. And it's awesome. massive, man. It's something that I've, like, I've never seen before. And, you know, to allow some some petty little little things to get in the way of, of something like that happening would just be a disservice to the community and the communities who matters in all of this. And our goal is to serve the community with massive value. And I believe that these guys have pulled it off and I'm proud to be a part of it. So you mentioned who you thought was going uh, to take it. I think who would you say number one? Man, I'm looking at the podium, and really, man, I, I've got to, I've got to imagine there's going to be an all-in guy up there. I know there's two guys from the all-in crowd up there. I know that Carlos Reyes runs a tight ship over there, and if he's going to put his, if he's going to put somebody out there, he's going to put his best people out there. So with two all-in guys out there, I'm going to imagine at least one of them's on the podium, and then with us having our Texas crew up there, like. Somebody from Texas has got to be up there, man. Aaron Q. Donovan's up there. RJ's out there, man. RJ's in my backyard. So, you know, that's kind of like that that backyard hometown crew thing. And, you know, really, like, I, I, I'd like to see somebody from Texas taking it. And if I've got to choose between the four people here in Texas taking it, man, I, I'm going to lean a little heavily towards Aaron Bevins, man. I love the man's charisma. I love his attitude. And I love his positivity. So if I had to lean towards somebody in Texas, man, RJ, I'm not going to say this again, but Aaron, man, if I'm, I'm, I'm cheering you on. 
I'll, I'll say this, man. I'm about got, to get roasted for this. Yeah, right. You got you got Steve Morales. I believe out of Florida, right? You got Chris out of Virginia. Uh, you got Keith out of Bama. Um, you got the mm-hmm. people out of Arizona and some, you know, Texas. Uh, I'm not sure who else I'm missing from what state, but I don't know, man. Something. There's some I mean, solid people I mean, in this lineup, man. I don't know. Something tells me, Lajwa, Bevins. It's just that charisma thing, man. I'm always big about charisma. I'm pulling my boy Q. I like the other guys, but those two guys, that charisma thing. You know, Keith, I think is very strong. He's very strong, mm-hmm. very confident. There's no, but there's nobody on that lineup that doesn't deserve to be there. I mean, everybody that's on that lineup is there for a reason. It's because they are definitely great people in their craft. But amongst the greats, there's definitely some that shine. And when you can throw charisma on there, charisma pulls a lot in a lot of situations. Like me personally, I can bulldog my way through stuff. That That's how I typically, whenever things start hitting, I bulldog my way through it. But that only gets you so far. Charisma will get you a lot farther than that, man. And and, and Aaron's definitely pulling it off on that. Charisma, on that charisma. So with that a lot Wait, so I'm thinking, hey, I, I, I really think he can do it, but I'm thinking it's going to be the old lion and the young lion. <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm looking forward so, to this, man. So There's no way to chat. call it, man. Who's taking bets on the sidelines? <laughs> I don't know, man. Someone's we got kidding. we got to start. We got to start a betting line, man. So so I got <laughs> to say something to you. Let's get back to Propelio. I right, never man. asked you this question, but I want to ask you today. The academy right. is very strong, very strong, and you know all those players, a lot of them. If you had to pick, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but your top five just came in there, dropped it all, and just, man, just, just gave it, man. Who would you say uh, if you had to pick up a line? If you had to pick that lineup. If I had to pick that lineup, it's, it's a simple one to answer. First spot always is going to go to Grant Kemp, man. Grant sure. Kemp put it all on the line before anybody else, man. He he put the Propelio flag down and he 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 hopped up there on stage and said, "You know what? I'm gonna give it my all." And he did. He put a full 18 hours of education yeah. out there on subject to rap investing, and he didn't hold back a dime, man. And he did that before anybody else did, and with nothing other than than the faith in the Propelio Academy and the mission that we were on, he committed it all. So Grant Kemp, subject to and rap investing by all means and i'm going to say this across the board he takes spot one two and three there is no one in my opinion right now that's, that's going to hold a candle to that because he, he does hold a certain place in my heart he's always giving yeah, it man I mean, so. yeah so like i i mean i personally committed several 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 courses to the academy and i don't even earn a spot on those top three it all goes to grant you know for me putting my my heart out there and putting my education out there that's a given like i'm the founder of the academy and i and i put a lot of my thoughts into that but for a, for somebody like grant kemp to come in and commit to it and give it it's all like there there is no there is no place for me to stand on that podium he takes all three well, he's definitely always bringing the pain. I mean, uh, we've watched him many times, and, uh, I mean, he he definitely is very thorough, and I don't think he ever holds back anything, so we love that about him. So, mm-hmm. well, For as Daniel, long as I've known him, man, he's never, he's never once held back. Daniel, I want to say, man, uh, thank you for sponsoring the Closer Olympics. Man, I know it's going to uh, – that Closer Olympics, a lot of people are going to take value. Uh, we start wrapping up here. For those who haven't bought their tickets, you know, what can they expect from the close Olympics? What can they expect from Propelio? Uh, go ahead and share that. Man, if if you're if you're on the line right now for the closes Olympics, like the only the only legitimate thing I can think of right now is that you you are in that tide of a cash crunch. And I, I've been there. I know exactly what a tight cash crunch can feel like. I mean, we're talking about the 10 cent macaroni and cheeses in the bags of, 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 of cereal when you were able to afford it, like because cereal has to come with milk and, and you know, the times get tight. I've been there. All that taken into consideration, man, it's 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 under 100 bucks to get in, I believe. And with that taken into, in, into consideration, you're going to get to watch probably close to 10 to 20 hours 
of live cold calling. You're going to get to hear different personalities. You're going to get to hear different objections. You're going to get to hear people overcoming these objections. And even if you walked away from those two days, pulling away just a handful of nuggets, and I couldn't imagine you pulling away anything less than a bag full of nuggets. But if all you walked away was a handful of nuggets, that's well worth the hundred dollar bill. Like I've dropped over a hundred grand into my education and I've never had an opportunity to see something like this before. I'm actually thrilled to be a part of it. I'm excited to see that it was done. It's definitely something that I think the industry can win from because you're going to get to see what it's like on these phone calls. So if you're on the fence about it, like really, when you come down to it, $97 doesn't really change the lives of too many people. And if you can find the way to pull through that, jump in on this, you're going to have the ability to watch it on a replay for close to three days. I do not get any sort of cutback for getting this thing sold. I just think there's a lot of value here and I'll be tuning in and watching myself. And for those that don't know, Propelio does sponsor the Closers Olympics. So those that are you that are still sleeping in the industry and have never heard of a Propelio, let me explain a little bit about it, man. Like we bring you massive value. There is no other word that I can can, can confine synonymous with Propelio is other than value. We bring you up to 150,000 property leads a month. 150,000. So with 150,000, that's 5,000 leads a day. That's absentee owners. That's vacant. That's high equity, low equity, no equity, unknown equity, all of these types of property, vacant properties, 150,000 of those leads a month. And that alone is worth what we charge for Propelio. But then you throw on top of that, you get access to national MLS comps across the nation, MLS comps available at your fingertips. So now you've got lead lids. Now you've also got MLS comps. And I could stop right there because there's plenty of people that sell just those two services for what Propelio sells our services for, but we throw more value on top of that as well. Now you also get professional websites and emails professional website and emails for your business. Like if you need a website and you've never built a website before, you don't need experience. Come into Propelio five to 10 minutes later, I've got you a website. So that way, when you show up to a homeowner's house, you're not sitting there saying, oh, I'm fly by night wholesaler at gmail.com. But how professional does that sound? Like, you know, it would sound a lot better if it's like Daniel at iBuyPrettyHouses.com. So we give you the ability to get those emails, give you the ability to get those websites. And if I stopped right there, you'd probably buy Propelio on its own, but I don't. I keep giving and giving and giving because that's just in my nature. You also get a driving for dollars app. It's called Propelio Mobile. With Propelio Mobile, you can track where you have been driving, see it on the map. You can pin properties. You can take pictures of properties. You can send people postcards with the picture of that property on it. And you can skip trace the homeowner. So you're getting lead lists. You're getting websites. You're getting professional emails. You're getting you're getting MLS comps. You're getting national lead list. You're getting all of this for less than most people charge for a single service. And then I throw yep. on top of all of that because I told you Propelio is synonymous with value. You get access to the Propelio Academy at absolutely no charge, whether you're a Propelio member or not. If you want to learn subject to wraps, mobile home investings, pre foreclosures, it's across the board. We've got close to 400 videos in the Propelio Academy, step-by-step, -step, actionable education, and it's not an upsell system. You're not going to go in there and get a third of what you need to execute, and then the other two-thirds is coming behind a high-priced paywall. 100% of the education is executable, and at the point in time, if you decide that you've executed it and you need a mentor, the people that are in there that have trained you will gladly mentor you. So go for it, and there is nothing out there like it that I've ever seen or I believe is available and I will wholeheartedly put my name and my, my personal brand behind every bit of it. Man, man. that was a lot to unpack right there, that was man. A lot, man. And, uh, and uh, if you guys out there listening, yeah. man, if you haven't, yeah. look, man, if you haven't jumped into yeah. Propelio, we push Propelio because, I mean, we believe in it. Um, you're sleeping, man. You're sleeping. I, I get so many people, so, you know, we, we do a lot of uh, – a lot of calls, Daniel. You know, we got the midnight hustle, and people call us, and we've been taking a lot of calls lately from around the country, and people will ask because you know, what do you use or where do you get your stuff? And and we always tell them this is where you got to go, you know. And uh, and and I just I just can't I just don't understand what else you're gonna offer because well, it's not I, stopping, man. It keeps I'm coming, keeping it going. You know? <laughs> it keeps coming, man. So I gotta I gotta I, so so. I I, one more thing. One more thing that Propelio offers is Propelio TV. There it Propelio is. Propelio TV. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's another thing, yeah. you know, value of there. So, I mean, there's actually a comment from YouTube here is, what is the Propelio HBHS show going to be about tomorrow? So, one of the things that Daniel does with the not only Propelio, Propelio Academy, but Propelio TV, bringing investors on breaking down deals, 
And one of them is the RII Hustle. And tomorrow, Charles and I will be on for Paleo TV. Thank you to Daniel. And we'll be talking about how we bought Thank a you. seller's house and flipped that house using the seller's money. And that is something to think about. We flipped the house using the seller's awesome. money. So, you, know, you guys make sure you tune into that. And the thing is, we're going to get in the weeds like you like, Daniel. I know you like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, so for Pedro TV, I like that. Glad like you brought that yeah, up. Yeah, I mean, because I'm forget about that. That's a whole another thing right there. Because the thing about the Pedro TV is, you're bringing on real people that are talking about real stuff, and that's just a whole other dynamic, man. Nobody's doing that, man. You know, I mean, people are doing podcasts and stuff, but you're doing this. I mean, constantly, you know. And so we're just glad to be part of it, and uh, we're glad to be part of the uh, the Propel TV and uh, everything that you do. Of course, we support. I have a question for you. The closer Olympics, man. Cold calling. I don't know, man. Something's telling me. Something's telling me. What about a creative financing type of type of a uh, type of a uh, uh, face off, man? I'm 1,000% certain that's, that's, that's something that we can do. I'm 1,000% certain that's something we can do because with, 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 with everything that's going on out there right now in the current market cycle, I don't believe that there's anything, any strategy that's going to outshine subject to as, as the way to go in the upcoming future. And getting this out there is something that I think that should be done. And if HBHS holds the torch and pulls that forward, I would love to be a part of it. Well, I don't know. I see myself going up against Mike here. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. But uh, <laughs> there's there's some heavy. I mean, there's not there's some creative financing guys, some old heads. They're not on Facebook, or whatever. But it'd be fascinating to see we, who we could pull. I'm thinking right off the bat, of course, Grant Camp. You know, I'm thinking off the bat, Pace Morby. You know, uh, um, you know, got some boys out here out of New, out of North Carolina. I think it'd be interesting, man. And it would. And so we took some live calls on the hustle. The, the Midnight Hustle uh, last Tuesday, the Tuesday before, and we just broke it down. And what we talk about is learn how to identify a deal. You know, you're learning how to identify a deal. Is it going to go wholesale? Is it going to go fix and flips? Is it going to go fix and hold? Is it going to be sub two? And that's the art of learning of learning creative financing. How are you going to take it? And then how do you unroute it? Are the numbers make do the numbers uh, make sense? Taking uh, take into consideration of future appreciation values, all kind of stuff. And I don't know. I'm just thinking. I was thinking about. It. I said, "Man, wouldn't it be good? Pretty cool if we can get some of the top credit financiers to come together and let's let's do some real live, some real live deals, man." Sign me up. If you want to brainstorm any of that with me, man, I'll gladly throw out some ideas because I'd love to see I'd love to see y'all do it. I'd love to be a part of it if y'all chose to do it and all of that taken into consideration. Like I, I think it's definitely a win. Like I could definitely drop some details and thoughts with you on that. But one of the things you said, and I don't want to sleep on it, is you were talking about like taking a look at a deal and then trying to figure out what your entrance and exit strategy is. There's essentially 12 of them. And I don't like when I see newer people in this industry holding <laughs> themselves up as a whole seller. It's like you're a real estate investor. And as a real estate investor, you've got tools disposable to you. Wholesaling is just one of them. You can't build a house with just a drill. You need a hammer. You need you need a lot of other things to, to get that house yeah. built. And if you're planning on building a house, then you're not just a wholesaler. You're a real estate investor. And while wholesaling has a really big shiny object syndrome to it because of, of all of the buzz around it, you really are cutting yourself short if you're not paying attention to other entrance and exit strategies. So yeah. as Grant, as Grant, man, he would want to participate, man. <laughs> oh, I know he would. I know for a fact he would. So let's do it. Like if y'all, if y'all are up for doing it, man, I'll back you in any way I can. We'd love to have Propelio be be the, the the face of it, man. So that'd be that'd be awesome, man. That's okay, that's let's do it, man. Like you want you want to chop it up tomorrow? Let's do it. So, so it I'll be let's get some females on this one, though. Yes. Let's get some females on this one. Yeah, right. That's, that's what we need there for sure. Who we got? Christina Spells. There it is. Um, yeah, let's, there's, a few out there's, there's a lot of powerhouse yeah. women in this industry. So let, let, let's not forget them this time around. I was a little sad about the Olympics this time around. None of the females got represented. It that well, wasn't my choice. But let's get some females on this one. I think they're having the 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 the, the queen. The queen. Uh, I don't know when or if it's the same day or what, but I know it's in the works. Yeah, so they're gonna they're building that out. I know that. Well, you know, let's talk about that. I think it'd be interesting for the people to watch. Real creative financiers put creative deals together, and so now we got 
We got the, the, the Coke Callers Olympics. We got the Queens going after the Coke Calling. Maybe we get some credit financing transactions going. Mix females and, and males going at each other. And, and, and let the people tune in. Yeah. Man. Tune in and, 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 and absorb the information. Absorb the information. I think it would be neat if if the if the winner of the if the if the winner of the queen side went up against the winner of the Olympic side, and then I think what would be even better is after all that's said and done with, they felt the heat of a creative financer on top of that. Because if you throw Whoa. a creative financer up against a cash discount wholesaler, the creative financer is going to take them down every single dime. Whoa. Because I can go in and offer two hundred percent of of ARV. I can offer two hundred percent ARV and still close. I can offer a thousand percent of ARV. And still close. Wait, wait, so wait, when you're wait, trying wait, to go for cash close, I'll Daniel, stack paper. I've never heard you. I've never heard you call people out, man. But did I just hear Daniel say that what you think would be good is if the the winner of the Coke Caller Olympics was to go up against the winner of the Queen Coke Caller Olympics, and then eventually they go up against a credit financing. Creative. Man. That's something. And, and I will I, clearly state, man, I put 100% of my bag on the creative financing side of it because if a creative financer can't take down a take down a cash discount wholesaler, then then you don't deserve to be the winner of the creative financing thing because I can pay a million dollars for a hundred thousand dollar house and still make ten million dollars off of it. Those guys, man, about the terms. Those guys on those cold calling uh, Olympics, man, they're they 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 they're, 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 they're the real deal, man. So props out to them. Uh, we'll definitely be talking to them to see if they want to expand this this thing, um, see if they're interested in that. But uh, I'm really interested to see what they're going to do. I think all those guys are just massive heavy hitters, and it's going to be. I think it's going to be awesome. Man. It is going to be awesome. Man. Again, it's all thanks to Bellion for being a sponsor. If you guys haven't done so yet, everyone's watching here on Facebook, on YouTube. Make sure you go to Propelio.com. Make sure you go to Propelio Academy. Make sure you tune into Propelio TV on YouTube, on Facebook. Daniel, any last words about this whole uh, Post Olympics? Oh, hell yeah. Like, like I, 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 I got to tell you right now that if you're not a part of this, the people that are are going to get those nuggets and they're going to be converting and, and closing those sales. So you're just doing your business a disservice. Like you've got to invest in your business. Go out there, get ready, get going. It costs these people a lot of money to put this production on. And with that taken into consideration, there does have to become a little bit of a price point with it. And when you're talking about $97, that really is a very small price point. So don't forget to support these guys. And remember when I was telling you Propelio provides value, I didn't even remember to tell you that the soft Software comes with a 14 day free trial. And not only does it come with a 14 day free trial, I don't even ask for your credit card up front. Like you can go out there right now with zero concerns, zero worries, and sign up for a Propelio account with your email and nothing more. Don't even have to worry about your credit card getting charged because I know for a fact that at the end of the 14 days, if you're serious about the business, you'll understand the value that Propelio provides. And at the end of 14 days, you'll sign up and use your credit card anyways. I don't hold you. It's no bait and switch. Get in there, check it out, and I know you'll love it. And at the end of the day, you'll be a Propelio subscriber. So I'm looking forward to seeing y'all there. Well, very well said, man. Daniel, thanks for your time. Again, tomorrow, guys, REI Hustle. Daniel, we'll see you on that one, buddy. Looking forward right, to it, man. Y'all have a great day. Thank you. Charles, man, a lot of closers, huh? All right, man. A lot of closers, man. A lot of people ready to call. To call, call. Uh, thanks to Propelio for sponsoring. Man, who? Yeah. I got to put, put you on the spot, man. Who's going to win? Man, I don't know, man. I, I top know, two, top three. So, so I, 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 uh, I'm pulling, I'm pulling for Q, man. You know, I got some money on him, man. But even though I'm pulling for Q, I gotta say that something tells me, and I, I, I so I'm pulling for Q. But he's hometown, hometown. Uh, and I think he has the skills. I think Keith is gonna be. Very difficult to beat, man. I really do. Some of the other guys, I don't know them, so I'm kind of being a little biased right, here. Right, so right. forgive me, guys. You know, I don't know so many guys, so so I, I might be I might be completely wrong. But I'm thinking that I'm thinking that Elijah and and uh, Bevins, man, are gonna. I just think it's gonna be the old line and the young line is gonna be there at the end, just just boom, boom, boom. And, and that's not that I'm not taking anything away from all the other guys. I know the guys from All In are, are super dope. You know, I've heard so much about Steve Morales and, and uh, Chris Jefferson and 
and and uh, I know there's a lot of badass guys, man. I hate to even say what I'm saying, man, mm. because there's some badass dudes out there, man. But I just think that um, I know charisma and knowledge, man, is real powerful, man, and uh, and and so that's that's where I'm at, man. Man, well, hopefully you guys were watching this, man. Make sure you guys tune into that. Uh, I do want to make an admin uh, spiel here now that it's towards the end of the podcast. Well, before you say it, man, you haven't said who you thought, man. And I'm not going to share my thoughts on that, man. Best of luck to all the clothes. I'm not going to coin man. anybody. Uh, real quick, guys, throughout the podcast, we're putting your comments, your questions on Facebook. We now use Stream uh, StreamYard to broadcast our podcast, guys. Make sure you go on there. It takes no more than three seconds. You go on there. All you got to do is hit accept. That way, when we put your comment or your question, we can show your name, your profile, and, of course, your question. Uh, real quick, admin, Charles, here. Uh, make sure you guys uh, join Home Bottom Center Association on Facebook. Uh, visit TrumpTheHustle.com if you haven't done so yet. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And on uh, Instagram, it's at Mike underscore HBHS, at Charles underscore HBHS. Tomorrow, guys, we have what they call the REI Hustle. The REI Hustle is a TV show on Propelio TV where Charles and I talk about real deals, real numbers, real strategies, um, and you guys are definitely not going to want to miss that because tomorrow we're talking about how we bought a house and we flipped that house using the seller's money. Uh, another announcement, guys, here. The number one late night REI show is called The Midnight Hustle. If you guys haven't heard of it, it is every other Tuesday, uh, Midnight Hustle, where we're the only, in my opinion, the only REI uh, team or an REI uh, group, whatever you want to call it, where we go on there, man, and we talk to all REI hustlers. Those guys who want to turn up the hustle, real deals, real REI, expect nothing but nuggets. You know, it usually lasts between 11 and 1. Now, you might ask, man, why are you guys doing this at midnight? Guys, if you guys haven't done so, if you guys haven't tuned into that midnight hustle, Charles likes to talk a lot, guys, and he breaks it all down there. If you guys haven't tuned into it, you'd be surprised at how many people tune in at 11 o'clock. Midnight at 1 o'clock in the morning. Can we tell a bit about what we're doing, man? Of course. So we launched the Midnight Hustle because people were asking us, hey, man, can you guys, you know, just talk to us about about creative financing and stuff. And, uh, you know, and, and and one night, man, I just, it was late. We we're during COVID. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to log in. And to be honest with you, can I just give some credit? credit of course, to you? So I used to watch uh, Mr. Q, Quentin Flores do these late night shows, and I would tell him, you need to do that more often. And I just decided to try it. And what I found was a lot of people, man, were engaging. We went up, I think we went to four in the morning that night. We started around one. I just wanted to see who would log on. And we didn't until four. And then you were like, wow, man, mm -hmm. let's, let's do it again. So the next time we did it again, this time we made it a little more interactive. And, and 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 so we said, you know what? Let's do this, man. So we so and then Q again. I give credit credits due. Mm -hmm. He he coined the name Midnight Hustle, and so we decided to make it a formal thing. And so last, not this Tuesday, but the Tuesday before, because every other Tuesday, we went live, and man, we just decided we're gonna break stuff down. In other words, we 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 let people call in, not only interact with us on Zoom on Facebook, so you can watch on Facebook. Or you can interact with us on a Zoom link that we put out, and and uh, we break people's deals down in real time, right? Mm -hmm. Figure them out, let you know, hey, this will this how we would work these deals, work numbers, and we're gonna keep getting better at that. As a matter of fact, I get my new computer on Saturday mm -hmm. with a little scratchy pad, so we're gonna get better at that. So we'll, so while we're talking numbers, you're gonna be able to see us actually work those numbers. Uh, may not be this Tuesday, maybe the following one, but that's what we want to get to. We want to get to the point where we're breaking down, not only talking real estate, answering questions. We call it raw E R R E I, right? Mm -hmm. But breaking real deals down, man, so you guys can see what's our thought process when we're looking at deals. And so I'm really excited about that, man. Uh, we all, man. So like I said earlier, I want to show you guys a quick example. So I make sure everyone fully understands StreamYard. So Alejandra here says three hours of free education there, Midnight Hustle. Uh, so you can see her photo, you can see her name, you can see her her, her, um, her comments. This is how it looks like uh, if you haven't gone to StreamYard and uh, accepted the um, the rules and guidelines. So here it is. Steven Morales is a sniper, though. Yes, he is. I'm expecting him to do good things at the Col uh, Closer Olympics. But you can see here there's no photo uh, and there's no name, guys. 
And we really want to know uh, everyone who's taking the time out of their day, out of their evening, to put a comment, question, or, or a concern on Facebook. So, you guys, make sure you go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook so we can show you guys uh, and we can talk and be more relatable to you guys. Any final words, Charles, before we start signing off here? Man, I just, I just, I just know these guys are gonna turn up the hustle, man. Turn up the hustle, man. You know. Yeah, I know. I do know, man. It's gonna be an exciting show, man. So looking very, very forward to it, man. Cool. All, all right, man. Done, man. We're well, done with that day. being said, guys, here we have a motto called "Turn Up the Hustle" for all you guys who are watching for the first time. "Turn Up the Hustle" is where we say, if you're doing one deal a week and you want to do two, if you're doing one deal a month and you want to do five, or you're just doing wholesaling, you want to learn how to do flips, whatever the case may be. You have to turn up the hustle, and that's what we do here, guys. Make sure you visit TurnUpTheHustle.com. Make sure you join Home Buy and Home Selling Association, where Charles and I and the whole Home Selling team always give value, always provide VAC, always want to provide content to you guys so you guys can do deals. Um, and don't forget, guys, tomorrow, every Thursday at 11, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, where we are on Propelio TV on a show called The REI Hustle. And tomorrow's show is How We Flip the House Using the Seller's Money. Hustling it's a lot of hustling, man. That's what we do here, man. So, Charles, with that being said, here at Home Bottom Sun Solutions, we always make sure that we turn, turn up, up the hustle. hustle.